White Stripes, Dead Leaves, and the Dirty Ground on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. We have got a great show lined up for you. Absolutely. Today is just, uh, yeah, Valentine's weekend, some love songs. Ooh. We've got some chat, and of course the competitions. I'll tell you what, I, I was walking here today, and the West End is crammed. There's helicopters, there's police, there's about a million people sort of just milling around, standing around with placards and stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but they've got too much time on that. They, they need a war. You don't read the newspapers, do you? Boring. Ooh, those boys can rock there. That's the guns with all their roses. <laughs> and sweet child of mine. <laughs> on oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed device. that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, hope, rocks I hope the audience was playing it loud, like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Jones, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have. Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always mm. find that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone. Yeah. One of you will go, let's go to bed, then you'll go, all right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh. You just forget to go to bed. So you I just stay up. Okay, stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've got all the food, that's just the plate. All right, okay. Yeah. No, I just, I, I stayed up and watched, um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not, not the fact that he's the living dead and is. No. Nope. And drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in mirrors. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, he can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors, but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, that still doesn't work. Okay, go on. Go on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work at all. Come anyway. on. Well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always <laughs> really neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> 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 I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre farting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was- The real Dracula, the real Dracula. Yeah, the real Dracula, the true It's just a film, it had blood on the floor or something, it's called. Yeah, it's rubbish. Yeah. From 1970. Yeah. Right. But you, you say that and watch that. You know there aren't yeah, really vampires in that yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it still annoys you that his centre parting was too neat. Well, if you're gonna do it- do you know what I mean? I'd like to see him with a fringe, sort of pushed forward, mm. and maybe a hood up, alright? Come to suck your blood on that, alright? Uh, yeah, just bits of tissue paper all over his face yeah. where oh, he's cut himself shaving. Oh, oh, I can't see it. Bloody mirrors annoying me now, right? <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> a little mank drack. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, that, that might be a film that we do in, uh, our movie. Mancula. Just, just getting onto that. Mancula. Count Mancula. <laughs> alright? <laughs> <laughs> you got any rave? You got any rave music? Ah, uh, Johnny <laughs> uh? Oasis, like that. Uh, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> uh, he came from Manchester. Please welcome Mancula. All right, <laughs> that'd be great, wouldn't it? His hair's a mess. Well, I can't see a mirror, can I? <laughs> well, we've got a show lined up for you. Um, sad news. For Rockbusters fans, it is going to be the last Rockbusters. Does that mean that we are doing another one and it's the last one? Or we are doing another altogether? one, and it's the last one. Oh, man. But a bit of a special one, Steve. Have you? Yeah. Um, it's just sort of done. Oh, it on, makes uh, sense. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> First time only. No, it's it's uh, it's done on accents because I'm running out of like clues and that to use. Oh, is this as bit good as the Jamaican one? Uh, <laughs> the the De Trout Spinners. <laughs> the De Trout Spinners. That doesn't work. At all. <laughs> a bit like that. Okay, so go on, what's, uh, what's the gist of this one? Well, it's just, um, I've been the sound effects bit, that, that didn't really wow. work out. So there's three sort of cryptic clues. Yeah. And, sort uh, of cryptic, yeah. it's done on, uh, it's done on accents and I've sort of worked down the country, so I've got a northern one, mm -hmm. I've got a brummy one, and I've got a, uh, cockney one. Excellent. All right, we'll look so forward to that. We've got later. quite a lot of competitions, haven't we? Because you've also got your film competition. He's, uh, appearing in The Shining this week, Steve. Excellent, okay. Um, we've also got, ooh, chimpanzee that. More monkey news from around the world. <laughs> monkey news. Uh, Stay tuned for that. But, there's one that I thought we could phase in as we phased out Rockbusters. It's an old favourite. Carl, it was before your time. XF Family Fortunes. XF Family Fortunes, it's brilliant. Get it owes nothing to TV show Family Fortunes. No, it's XF Family Fortunes. You can't get him on that. So we'll be playing that a little bit later as well with two lucky um, people at the moment. And we'll be giving away some great prizes, I imagine, Steve. Yeah. Go through those a little bit later. Yeah. Um, as it was Valentine's weekend, what about uh, a lovely song by Lloyd Carl? Oh. Like Lovers Do. Okay? Love yeah. oh. Lloyd Carl. 
like lovers do on XFM 104.9. Is that for all the lovers out there? <laughs> yeah. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and little Carl Wilkinson. Oh, we're having a laugh, aren't we? Little Carl with his hey, sandwich and that. Up, he? Oh, I was a, oh, I'm still bruised where you punched me in the shoulder, showing that you could box. Yeah, to be fair though, Rick, you do think that you're now a yeah. professional boxer because like you've been on the telly boxing. Yeah. No, he does. Uh, I mean, he laughs about it, but he does walk around thinking, yeah, I could probably handle myself in a yeah. street brawl. In fact, I walk around handling myself. Yeah. A lot of the time, don't yeah. I, Carl? Um, and often mm. Carl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Because his little round head, I've got another mate that's got a little bald head, and I'd like to squeeze it. Mm. I'd just <laughs> like to see how far. Do you know what I mean? Like an egg. It, you can squeeze it that way, sort of sideways, and that hurts. But then squeeze it forward to back, it doesn't hurt so much, does it? Do you know what worries me, though? I think <laughs> if you ever actually did crack Carl's head, I think yolk would come out. <laughs> yeah. I did, he was drawing, and I gave him a little karate chop on the back of the head, and he jumped. He spasmed. Sorry, you it? gave him a karate chop on the back of the head? Yeah. To I'm be fair, though, I think I'd spasm. <laughs> <laughs> if a man crept up behind me and karate chopped me in the neck, oh, that's I probably laugh, a natural Carl. reaction. Didn't I laugh, oh, eh, yeah. Carl? This is right, good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we got lots of uh, little things to get through. I mean, look at his little face. You all right? We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah, I we hate were, going out with you two. Uh, I was explaining to Carl, right? I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh any of you out there, um, know about this, um, but there's, there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where, uh, there's, your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scart lead that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut, like its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went instead of like thinking this is amazing experiment, he went, "Would it would it have been happy if you're giving it two nuts?" <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, well, you started off by explaining it. I remember you mentioned because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me. You said, "Of course, one side of the brain deals with uh, symbolism." And as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing <laughs> buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed it took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said it. I think I said chair at one point as well. Right, yeah. And I, I knew I was dicey with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, I did, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah. spelling, the spelling of it's what what is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't put, couldn't do it. Couldn't no, it's a point. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't know. But yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, what explain something. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, you, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told really? him about them. He was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us. Evolutionally speaking, they've got their social um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? Oh, so is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary ladder? Chimp Carl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> talking about them. So yeah. we'll be talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> 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 WC, featuring Snoop, The Streets on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I think we should, uh, kick off with a bit of a competition. I think we should get the, the listeners involved here. Mm -hmm. Phone up if you want to play XF Family Fortunes. Now, a lot of people, of course, won't be familiar with this because we played this in the very early days of XFM. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain but the rules or do you just want people to phone it's in? It's like Family Fortunes. We need two of you. <laughs> uh, I asked you- Do you remember you, we discussed this before, you can't say that. Yeah. Um, and so get two on the line, you're, you're competing against each other, and so it's fingers on the buzzers. Um, will you stop chewing, picking your teeth? It, it's, it, I mean, even if the listeners can't hear, it really annoys me. It is a bit like having a chimp in the room. Do you know what I mean, Carl? All right. Have you ever seen him he eat hot food? No. Uh, honestly, it is like a chimp. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and what are you doing? What? Well, <laughs> just get. Oh, God. <laughs> or like the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm never annoying, Carl, so why are you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Steve? You're so annoying. I tell you, have you been with him for trying to go, trying to have lunch with Ricky? Yeah. It's the hardest thing possible. Yeah. You wander around for hours. Com it's a, well, the combination, it used to be bad even before he was a celebrity because he has this, the, a tolerance level, I, it's extraordinary. I mean, he is irritated <laughs> by a car honking its horn in the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't believe it, let's go in here, I, I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, he, he gets annoyed by police sirens, by rain, wind, <laughs> birds in the air, other people in the streets. They're the most annoying. Children, particularly. Whether they're in a school playground we happen to be walking past. <laughs> whether they're on TV. It's, it's just noise that isn't mine. Well, I know, but this is the thing. You are the most irritating man I've ever met, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you know that car, don't you? I mean, yeah. noises he makes. Oh. Um, uh. It's extraordinary. I mean, I've been, I've been, well, I've been editing some behind-the-scenes footage we shot of, uh, making the second series of The Office. It's extraordinary. I've had to cut sequences out involving Ricky because they'll just think he's a giver, just think he's an idiot, like some kind of puppet that the rest of us are controlling because he's shouting, he's whistling, he's honking, he's making noises, he's dancing around. It's extraordinary. And if you're out trying to find somewhere to eat with him, all these irritants, all these annoyances, and it's, oh, that music's too loud, I don't like that particular song, I'm not going in there, there's more than eight people in that cafe, I'm not going in there. It's just <laughs> extraordinary. I think we need a woman. I'm thinking of hiring a woman, like a PA, to just go out ahead of us, scout ahead of us, go in, you know, and she, she can just sexist. stand back and say, Oh, <laughs> sexist. <laughs> oh. Or a guy. Oh, that's Or a fella. Oh, sexist. Or a fella. Just to scout ahead. Oh. I'm thinking back. of hiring a woman, subservient role. We couldn't hire him. Oh, no. Oh, sexist. Well, that or a chance to meet a woman. <laughs> Yeah. That I'm also yeah. paying. It's like, it's like paying for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like more above board. Yeah. So, uh, if, if you want to play Family Fortunes, call up. What's the number? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Yeah, it's just like Family Fortunes, Turvio, uh, competing for some great prizes. And, uh, I go, um, something you'd, you know how it goes, and then <laughs> go buzz and, and, uh, play around board. It's not as high tech <laughs> as Family <laughs> Fortunes. <laughs> Current single from uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, that's Bring It On. Yeah. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and two people on the line to play XF Family Fortunes. <laughs> Brilliant. Hello. Steve hello. first. Steve, hello. Steve first, hello, how you doing? You alright, mate? Where are you calling yeah. from? Uh, from my pub in Barnes. You got a pub? Yeah. In Barnes? Yeah. Are you posh? No. Oh. <laughs> I suppose they. <laughs> You're the, the, the local landlord, do they, do they come yeah. in and sort of like go, good man, there's a, there's a shilling, get me some ale. They're all posh in barns, aren't they? Well, no, not all of them, actually. Does Nigel Havers come in your pub? Because he lives there, doesn't he? <laughs> um, well, none of them do, actually. I know there's lots of them about, aren't there, in barns, but, um, but no, not You've in You've banned them. You've banned them. Who, who's on the other line? It's, uh, Jennifer. Jennifer, hello. Hello. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Forest Hill. Forest Hill, that's yeah. right south, and I don't no, go out of WC1. <laughs> Oh, you do you run a pub? <laughs> do I own a pub? No. Do you drink in one? Yeah. That's just good. <laughs> just, just, just from friendly chat there. Yeah, I think it's just, thing just between the brain that you were talking about before. Oh yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, they did an experiment, and apparently the length of it determines whether you're a straight or gay. Is that That's right? What I heard. Yeah. Well, so what? You could actually trim it if you fancied. <laughs> 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 you didn't go that far. Oh. Well, you, you, you've just interacted with Carl Pilkington. Oh, my I'd, God. I'd treasure that. Right, here's the prizes. Okay, now, um, listen, don't be disappointed because, as ever, Carl has just gone through some people's drawers here at XFM and found some really quite shoddy prizes. So, um, you get <laughs> on DVD. I don't know if you're a fan of it. Is it, are they a German band? Rammstein or Rammstein? Oh, you'll enjoy that. But there's, uh, there's any number. <laughs> that, that includes Ash zu Ashk, Spiel mit mir, <laughs> and Hegelade. That's just some of the classics on this, uh, DVD of their, <laughs> their greatest videos. Uh, Red Dwarf, uh, the do you think series. Germans sit around looking at Oasis records and going, look at these Wonder Wall? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly so. Wow. Um, best, the very best of the Stone Roses, um, although I might have that, so, anyway, uh, there's also an I Love You compilation, kind of appropriate, and, um, a tribute to the Ramones, which so might be interesting. So you can get the idea, um, Steve and Jennifer, the stakes are pretty high. <laughs> 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 
Okay, here we go. Exit Family Fortunes. So, fingers on the buzzers, just both go, wah! If you think you can answer this right, and then we, uh, the, the highest answer or the top answer gets the chance to play or pass. If you play, you've got to get all five answers. There are five answers. Um, every wrong answer, you get a life, and I go, <laughs> and when you get three, when you lose three lifelines, then the other person can steal. It's as simple as that. If you've seen uh, the show Family Fortunes. No, this is a new, this is not based on anything I've ever seen ever <laughs> in my life. Okay, right. Okay, fingers on the buzzers. Okay. Name something. We asked eight of my mates, right? Something you associate with Carl Pilkington. Wah! Okay, Jennifer, <laughs> what? Silliness. Yeah, that's the top answer. Thick or dimness. Do know. you want to play or pass? Play, please. Okay, okay. Stay, stay tuned, Stephen, because you might be able to steal if she gets three wrong. Okay. Right, <laughs> right okay. <laughs> right, we've got a top answer. Four to go. Thick or dimness is top answer, obviously. Okay, Jennifer, some other things associated with Carl. Comedy. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. <coughs> no, no. I don't even know who he is. Um... You uh, don't even know who he is? <laughs> <laughs> no, she does. She must and do. And yet, bizarrely, I... she knows that silliness or yeah. stupidity is a person. Yeah, come on. Something else. Um, um, smelly eyebrows. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> One more wrong answer and then Stephen gets a chance to steal. Okay, um... Uh, I don't know. Um... People are screaming it at home. Very sensible. <coughs> oh, what, was that very sorry. sensible? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stephen, can you think of one of the answers that Jennifer didn't get? Uh, must be a, a mind for a name nonsense. Oh, well, uh, no, I'm going to give you that because number five is even thicker. So, <laughs> yeah, you mi what you missed is, um, our top answer was thick or dim, second top answer was Manchester. Third was rounded, fourth was airy Chinese kid, and five was um, even thicker. Um, so I, I think Stephen's the winner there. Yeah, I think he's done well. Yeah. Uh, you enjoy uh, Ramstein, and you get uh, the Stone Roses and an I Love You CD. So that's the that's the pilot that's for this show. Okay. When Blockbuster's all over, this we're going to phase in mm. XF Family Fortunes. Carl, thoughts? It's not that good, is it? Why? It's not. It's not that good. Just. <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm not that happy with it. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, I'm just... What else? What, what... No. <laughs> You're definitely <laughs> right about that top answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, uh, right, um, so, uh, Stephen wins all those prizes. Yeah. And Stay on the line and we'll send, take your address. And we send something to Jennifer as well for even bothering to talk to Carl. Mm. So <laughs> what's this, Carl? What are you playing now? That about the drone boy. Yeah, excellent. What Bye. Do we doing Rockbusters then? Later. Eminem, sync of the moment on XFM 104.9 with your host Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right, Carl, moving on. Got a lot to cram in. If you yawn again or pick your teeth or chew, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, can I just, you know, sometimes I get told off by Carl, he gets a little bit sulky if I slag off the prizes that he sources for each competition. Uh, this is from Rob in Croydon. He's a former winner of Rockbusters. Yeah. Uh, he said he didn't even know what the prizes were going to be when he entered. Uh, he won, and sure enough, for one night only, he was a hero. The following morning, uh, it was just Rob again, and all I had to show for my t triumph are five compilation CDs I'll never listen to. Yeah. And two DVDs I'll perhaps get nine pounds for on eBay. Please get some decent prizes. Is, Ricky, you're BBC's golden child of comedy. What are you doing? How many of your listeners really are into Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince? No one. That's how many. Now, that is a winner. That's someone who's got a reason to like us and oh, like you. I think he's got the same attitude as Steve when you give him something for free. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Sorted you out with NERD tickets for last night. A lot of messing around, a lot of phoning around yeah. going on to get you them tickets. Yeah. Come in today. You enjoy the gig. Couldn't be bothered going, yeah. Carl. Typical. Yeah. I didn't say I couldn't be bothered going, Carl. You just pursue, presume, is assumed that that was the case. You're right, but well. the point is this, Carl. Once you've given me the tickets, they are mine to do with as I see fit. The thing is, what annoys me is right. <laughs> I bet he hasn't even listened to them CDs. He might no, find something. No, on so there. that's his point. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, to but, be fair. But I don't want to give him stuff that's too good because then they'll listen to CDs instead of XFM. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's always careful planning. <laughs> So. You always got an answer. Yeah, oh, Carl, you're my hero. We so. we don't care, do we, Carl? Well, I, I'm I, I'm I think the prizes are all right considering what they've got to do. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. 
Right. It's just a bit of fun, for God's sake. <laughs> so, uh, Please do not blaspheme on air. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, The Shining. <laughs> it's just more throwing away, isn't it? Once again, Is it on it, video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just cause you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I wanna watch it tonight, cause it's one of those films that, um... <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video, <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of them th films that <laughs> I'm gonna... Sorry, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune before he gives it away? <laughs> <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Bowen has a go at those his near towel racks. <laughs> <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then. No. Yes. Good. Funny, someone, uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write, is typewriter. I'll, I'll just show you, just... That's weird, isn't it? It's just, the typewriter being, you're not, not in the mood, are you? just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again, that you get into when you're writing. You're not. Being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. Yeah, no, it's just she being a bit funny, a bit offhand and that. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up. You know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff, got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book, do you know what I mean, sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it, you know, but if you don't want to know, well, after. Don't bother doing it, but, do you know what I mean? It's just airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it, but if you don't care... I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You don't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much, just checking to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still... Why don't you start right now and get out of here? All right. I will. Gonna be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there. Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know if I was stranded in a desolate hotel removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> <laughs> That's more chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> just for the head of it. And he, he was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I think it'd be a great laugh, won't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary. There's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, just if I was stranded in, that would be like being, I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and yeah. Jason Voorhees. <laughs> it, that's, that's more scary. The thing the is, of Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In, uh, 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1. The old bin lid on the head, <laughs> if you wanted to do that again. Yep. Uh, squeezing my head, think he had a go at. And, uh, karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can 
couldn't say that. Who else could say? What do you mean? Uh, uh, anyway, have we got a question? Yeah, to win a copy of. I'm so embarrassed to say it. The Shining <laughs> on, VHS. on VHS is worth five ninety nine, <laughs> and it will have already been watched by Carl Pimpton, probably not even rewound. Yeah, to not win that, and a, a little bit of tripe and cow eels where it <laughs> just yeah. slipped into his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> a barb cake yeah. outside. As he was reading the back of the box, trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the ingredients. Um, to what about this, right? To got oh, here's a question. I've got a question. Oh, no, go on. on. No, what, no, I want to hear yeah. Carl's first. Okay. No, it's about <laughs> the film. Um, because yeah. when I was whizzing through it, I saw something and thought, oh, that's good. Um, the kid who's in it, um, he was writing something on the back of a door with lipstick. <laughs> what was it? Well, that's a tricky question. I can't remember. Nor can I. Oh, I so the kid in it was writing Is something on the back of the door. Is that gonna be too hard for anyone? Let's see if- I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody- Right, the phones are going, so it might be. Yeah, but this is email, isn't it? All right, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> what was being scrawled on the back of a door by the little kid in The Shining? Be honest, if you know that, it means you've probably already got it and you've watched it about eight times. Yeah. Fair enough, though. All right. Uh, Bob Dylan. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna make me lonesome when you go on XFM. Sorry, they're arguing. Steve and Carl are arguing. But he just goes, you've got to keep about, it slick. Do you know what, can I just tell them what you're arguing about? The, think of this, right? This is the argument. They're arguing whose fault it is why this show is rubbish. Think of that! What? What? That's a proof of that. I think that's a valid criticism. At least we're discussing it. You're just accepting that that's the case. <laughs> you're not even trying to change it. <laughs> We're- uh, we're ashamed of it! <laughs> yeah! We have to I go out there! Be, I should be, but, uh, I, I quite like it! In fact, I remember- remember when we went out about two weeks ago and <laughs> said so we've, we've got to, you know, make it tighter and that, make it good. <laughs> um, went out for something to eat. <laughs> you- you were happy sat at the table talking about squids and having to, <laughs> you know, go off with one if you wanted to have a kid. I brought up the topic, right, what we're gonna do about the show, suddenly you've got to go. It's like, oh, I think I've- I've made plans. So me and Steve sat there <laughs> coming with stuff. Do, no, <laughs> see, I do the- I, I- I do- I do acknowledge, um, uh, quite- quite shamefully that this is more enjoyable for me to do than for you to listen to. But it's like- it's like two hours sort of playtime for me. It's like, um, you know the study period when you're meant to read a book but you actually can't afford to run around and draw pictures. I think like this, even though I'm getting paid for this and I'm meant to be working, it's nice. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> not- not for the listener. But, but for the, me. But the problem is, the only way we can improve this show, Carl, to be honest, the only way we can make this good is if the three of us resign. Yeah. And they <laughs> replace it with someone else. Yeah, but Carl, you, you're getting flustered and you're getting stressed because you're, tr you know, I don't know what I was saying, answer the phones, you were letting them ring, you're still letting it ring. You're still letting people phone, you go, oh look, leave that. And uh, people have phoned in, good enough to phone in, to ask for something for free. <laughs> I think you should at least answer the phone and say, it's not worth it, the prizes are rubbish. Well whilst I'm doing all the other stuff, maybe you can do that. No way. Right then. No but to be way. fair, Rick, I'm not- I'm not accusing you of being lazy. No. But you're sat on a chair and yet you're almost vertical. <laughs> yeah, I, I got... don't know how you've done it. It's like you're almost asleep, <laughs> but you're sat on an upright chair. <laughs> I don't know how you've actually angled yourself in I'm that way. I'm gonna have a bad back when I'm- oh, in old age, I'm just gonna be bent double. Right, so come on I now, what? pretend we're starting now. Okay. We've just started the show yeah, now. Yeah, it's two o'clock, it's right. XFM, um, it's the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, or our show, it's our show. From now on, I'm- I'm- I'm at least <laughs> cutting up the blame as well. Um, XFM 104.9, what do you wanna know? Funny thing happened to me on the- on the way here. <laughs> okay. Um, actually it was, uh, about Wednesday or Thursday, I was walking along, I was walking along Charing Cross Road, I was on my way here actually to meet Carl for a drink, and um, this little fella came up to me, I think it was, uh, an overseas student, he's sort of like a student type but he had an accent and, uh, he came up to me and went, excuse me, are you the uh, one from the office? And I went, um, yeah, yeah, he went, um, would you sign a script book of the office for me? I went, uh, yep, yeah, by all means, yeah, he went, can you come to the bookshop? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what, what, you haven't got it on you? He went, no, but if you come I will buy one for you to sign. And I went, I can't really. He went, <laughs> were you gonna pass one? I went, I'm oh, not, no, I'm, I can't. He went, and he went, as he went, oh, I was just, I was just in Waterstones earlier. I didn't, I didn't, oh, I went, oh, sorry. He went, you could just, I went, I can't. He went, okay. I went, I'll, I'll sign something else. Have you got something else I can sign? He went, of course. 
<laughs> and I signed a pamphlet or a brochure or something <laughs> for him. But I love the idea, imagine me going with him, <laughs> I'm queuing up, and I'm in the queue, he's going, uh, you can't go, yeah fine, can you just hurry up? And he gets there and his switch doesn't work and he goes, can you lend me ten pounds? <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine that. I'm a little bit annoyed you didn't go with him, frankly, because that would have been a sale of our book and I get a little cut from that. Well, behind him was Salman Rushdie. <laughs> going, right. can, can we hurry up? Because yeah. I've read, I shouldn't be out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of funny looks. <laughs> and uh, I really, you know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. But it, I thought it was very odd the other day, was we were walking along and Ricky often gets bothered for an autograph and, um, some Japanese people who I think were tourists, oh, kind of, they, 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 they appeared from behind the corner and I thought, this is odd, that, you know, they seemed like tourists but they're obviously gonna ask for an autograph. <laughs> and they just handed him a camera and said, excuse me, would you take a photo of us? I was, I and they was didn't cracking recognize up. Him. They didn't I recognize just, him. I was laughing, I was thinking, right, oh, So okay. now Ricky stood in the street, people are recognizing him as he's taking a photo of three <laughs> complete Japanese, Japanese strangers. <laughs> And I imagine them getting home and so say, and here's the one we had taken by Ricky Gervais. Taken with Ricky Gervais? No, taken by Ricky Gervais. From the office. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Uh, <laughs> would you come to uh, the bookshop with me? The life of a minor celebrity. Not really. <laughs> Times like these, Foo Fighters and XFM 104.9. Carl, right. let's build up to monkey news. Do you want to give the, uh, the competition answer and winner? Yeah, uh, we did the bit on, on The Shining, me acting out in that. Yeah. And the question was, the kid in the film The Shining, yeah. he, uh, <laughs> after like the devil had got in him and that. <laughs> uh, this isn't written out, is it? You're just winging this, aren't you? No, but I remember it. I well, you haven't seen it. the film though, have you? No, but when I was whizzing through to get the clips to make that thing, right. I saw it and I thought, hang on a minute, I'll watch this bit. And yeah. that's why I want to take it home yeah. tonight and watch you're excited, it. Yeah. I meant more how you're presenting the competition. It's just like Jonathan Ross on film 2003. Well, I'm just just saying, right? So the kid's there in the bedroom, and yeah. he's uh, he's got his mum's lipstick. Yeah. And he's uh, he's saying. It doesn't run a, a mobile D. No. And he no. said uh, he, he wrote down red rum. Yeah. On the back of the door. Uh huh. And his mum wakes up and thinks, "What's he doing?" Yeah. She looks at him. She goes, "Oh." And then she looks in the mirror. And sees red rum in the mirror. Right. Which he is thinks sort of he's offering racing tips. Yeah. It says murder in the Ooh, mirror. Clever. Oh, clever. So, uh, Kelly in Hounslow got that right. So, Excellent. after I've watched the film, I'll be whizzing that over uh, to Hounslow. Brilliant. I, I, I mean, the one thing I do like about um, this show, uh, for all its faults, is the. Honesty? Yeah. I mean, that can be good and bad. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, some people think it's it's sloppy, arrogance, laziness, you know, They'd be right. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I like I like to think it's honesty. It's like a peek into the to the mind and workings of Carl Pilkington. He just said to me because he was shaking because he said to me and the, I, I quote he said oh he's just uh, whittering to himself. I must remember to eat <laughs> next time Suzanne's away. I know, I know. I, I like must to remember it. to eat next time Suzanne's away. No, but you did. I mean, I wonder if I lived on my own if I'd still be about. <laughs> 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 because I just neglect myself. Yeah. So, I mean, for b all I've eaten A lot morning, of self-abuse, is that I what you're saying? I had lasagna last night that I messed up, right? Why did you mess Cut it up? it for too long. It was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and she called up and said, have you eaten? And I went, yeah. She went, was it nice what you have? I said, lasagna. Was it nice? I thought, I don't want her to worry, because she's probably been out and had a good meal with all the work people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, well, I'm, you know. And she went, okay, bye, bye. And I go, that car, yeah, yeah, I bet he cooked it like a brick. <laughs> yeah. I bet he yeah. threw it away. Anyway, <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, scotch pancakes for breakfast. That is all I've had. So I'm starving, I'm shaky. Plus I've got that restless leg syndrome still going on. <laughs> which I can't get rid of. What's restless leg syndrome? <laughs> I find, uh, if I go to bed, right, my body's tired but my legs aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like Michael Flatley? <laughs> you have to get up and do a bit of tap dancing. Do they, do they just keep going even just when keep, you're asleep? Keep moving about, so I have to get up and stretch them or something. Or I've worked out that if if I put a pillar on like the bedpost down at the other end, yeah. if I have my legs higher than my heart, it calms it down a bit. Is this why Suzanne works away so often? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> to get a decent night's sleep. I put it down to Smarties and that. It's like a sugar thing, but yeah. um, stop eating them. Apparently, Bob Morton has got it as well. No, he's got arthritis. Oh, has he? You told yeah. me the week that you've mastered, uh, moonwalking. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Is that I'll one of the things you did, yeah. like, in the middle it, of the night? Can, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's moon sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just did gets out, he finds himself walking backwards and yeah. wakes up and goes, oh god, I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant at this. 
Right. So, so listen, what we're doing though? Are we doing? Uh, are we getting a debate going about? Actually, right. Go on. We're struggling. Go on. No, no. You can help me out here, Carl. You've got an idea. I can see it in your eyes. He's got a brilliant idea. Wait for it. Go on. No, no. It's something when I was looking on the web, found yeah. something out. Go on. Um, it's a story about mm. a woman who had a baby. <laughs> who had a baby. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what? A, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, it was no clearer right. when you repeated it. No, Carl, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the common good, right? Pursue this line of inquiry, right? Because I don't know where it's going. Or play a record. I, I'm actually torn. I don't know what to do. No, I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that. It's brilliant. What? Uh, should we, what should we do? Should we, should we go with it? It's a, I mean, it's like, it's entering into the abyss, it's opening Pandora's box, it's, <laughs> it's peeking it's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions, though. Go on, then. Well, come down there with me. <laughs> okay, come down right, in the cellar with me. Okay, right. Carl, what, 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 first of all, it was on the way, what, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another, was it, she didn't give birth, they didn't, the doctor didn't find one of those set of Chinese dolls up her. Rus Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're called. That's, that's what I pictured it like, those, those dolls where you tap the, Ed off, and there's another one in there that all look the same. But no, the story was <laughs> there's a woman who's no. Don't just say it again. That's a headline. That's not a story. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. <laughs> That's yeah. not a story. That, um, imagine handing that in as a, th as a thesis to loads of the BMA. Hey, are that? There you go. And uh, yeah. read that. That's a, said, that's a children's rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. What do you mean? So the baby she had a baby, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that. That's normal. That's normal. A, a totally woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more. Of course you do. from the fact that huh? the baby's like roaming about, <laughs> and then uh, twelve, like twelve months later, she's like, oh. Interesting. So the gestation period of the that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. It's weird though, isn't it? So was the headline, my baby's twelve months pregnant? <laughs> what are you talking about? Twelve months later it had a- what are you talking about? Forget it. it no, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That you said, and twelve months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't- I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that and I thought- You didn't read That's weird. And then I just was thinking, oh, like, imagine the kid at school, at parents' evening. <laughs> Go on. And it's like, well, your kid's <laughs> pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't. Play record. We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we should have just left the cellar door closed. But I never learned. That's the zombies and a song called Time of the Season. I've enjoyed that. What do you think of zombies, Carl? It's alright, yeah. No, not the, not the group, but the oh, the the living dead. Don't worry about them. No? Why? Not about are they? It doesn't happen. <laughs> you don't right, believe listen, in that? Listen, right? You don't believe in zombies? So, I But you do believe online. a baby had a baby? Yeah. On you go. On you go. Are you still saying that didn't happen? Yes. Right, well I'll find the thing again, I'll print it off and well, then you'll Well, all I'm it. saying is there's more information that we need. Yeah. yeah, but but it always annoys me that when I do get the information, you'll go, yeah, but it's named Sally. You didn't say that. I make out no, uh, as if no, 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 no don't, don't, do, ma don't do. make it look like w w we're over inquisitive or over cynical. You come out with the the most abominable things man has ever uttered, <laughs> and you expect <laughs> us to accept them. Usually headlines, usually uh, illogical, not just probably wrong. So fleas are born pregnant. <laughs> Are they? Interesting. Yeah. Right. Okay. See? On we go. So, See, that's true and you're not impressed. Because it doesn't involve a little werewolf child. Or half man, half shark. It's, you, you just not, it's not good enough for you. No, but what I, what, I, if I read the first line of something and it's not, not that interesting to go next, right, and I move <laughs> on. Now when I saw a woman had a baby and it had a baby, but I you go, still didn't Ooh. read on. No, but I, all right, I didn't read on, but it got me thinking. Like I said, it's you, you wonder about the parents' evening. I was thinking about <laughs> you know, did. is it a good thing? <laughs> because you're going to spend more time with the kid. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of mums who have to go out to work and that. She's going to be a great mum. Grew up with her, literally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so She's going to be wonder... a great mum. 
I, I just wonder if, I know it sounds weird, but if was it's- Was it, was it, was it the, 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 you know the baby that woman had, was that a girl or a boy? No, it would've been a girl, wouldn't it? Of course it would've, it'd be mental, wouldn't it, if it wasn't? Right. <laughs> it'd've been a weird story, wouldn't it? So anyway, that reminded me, because we were talking about other amazing stuff, that Ricky told me to find out about. Steve, are you aware of bonobos? We mentioned them earlier, I'm not particularly familiar with bonobos. Right. It sounds like a cream cake. No, they were, they were, um, a, a, a sort of a, a chimpanzee, but more advanced than the, the, the traditional chimpanzee. There's a, they live, uh, uh, in one sort of particular area. And, um, you know, it's the sort of closest animal to the missing link. They're very intelligent. They take on a lot of social aspects of, um, human. They have sex for, um, pleasure mm -hmm. and no other. Steve's looking uh, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> He's done, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, what did you find no, out about Apparently, him? I found out it's 98% not human, this kind of thing. It's nearly human, but it's not. We share 98% of DNA yeah, with it. Yeah, 98%. Yeah. It's a higher percentage um, than you. <laughs> <laughs> they have sex for pleasure. They do look a bit like him, though. They've got a little round head, haven't they? But, and they um, sort of, they're much more upright than the, you know, got a more well, flexible. I, I sort of get bored with animals that are like classed as being intelligent, right? So when you tell me- <laughs> I thought I'd get bored with them. Because yeah. they're not doing enough, they're exactly. not playing no, no, Nintendo. Do you know, do you know like that people always rave on about dolphins, saying, yeah. oh, they're really bright and that. Yeah. You know, um, I was having an argument with Suzanne about it and she goes, oh yeah, dolphins are really intelligent. And I said, but what? What have they done? So <laughs> she said, <laughs> well, they, they use them in wars, they strap bombs to the back to go out to boats. Yeah. So then blow up the boats. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're trained, yeah. Well, that isn't that bright. If it was really bright, it'd go, I'm not doing that. Well, no, they leave them. They don't blow themselves up. They, ang anyway, but- All Right, well. So anyway, so bonobos, um, really bright and that. Mm. Now, I was looking at them, mm. and they are, you know, they, they're saying, the the, you know, they, they're just like humans, basically, right? Mm. Well, what I was thinking is, I didn't have a chance to ask you, um, if you got a mentalist, Right. And put the bonobo in what an exam. Mean, what, okay, right, okay. What do you mean a mentalist? What do you mean? Well, you know, someone who's, you know, a little bit, a, just a little bit slower than me, and put an put them in an exam, what would happen? Right, okay, you've got to be clearer here, Carl. What, what are you saying? Are you saying pit the wits of a bonobo against someone who's educationally subnormal? Yeah. What do you reckon? <laughs> I, again, I <laughs> don't know where to start. I, no, but no. if they're that good, why aren't they being used in, uh, in labour and stuff? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what, it, what, in the, in the late, what do you mean, in no, the government? like, you know, like, <laughs> some, some jobs that they could do. Why well, hasn't someone caught onto it and thought, well, hang on a minute. Sorry, I, I'm not familiar with the bonobo. Seriously, could it do a job of work? How how advanced are these well, creatures? They, uh, lots of animals do job of work. I, I think Carl wants this bonobo to start going to work at, uh, with an umbrella and a bowler hat and uh, have sort of like rudimentary language skills like morning, <laughs> morning. <laughs> so the bonobo. <laughs> so I couldn't employ the bonobo to be my PA. It's um, not. I mean, how advanced are they? Could could I no. tre could I teach you to go in the shops and collect something and well, bring yeah, it? Yeah, but you can teach a dog to do that. Yeah. It depends what you mean by intelligence, social interaction, uh, also dexterity capability, you know. Could uh, it produce this show? <laughs> yes! I, I'd have thought it could, <laughs> randomly. Yeah. Uh, um, Just by pressing the buttons it could do a better it, job. It's, it depends what you're asking, Carl. It, it, what I mean, what you mean is, it can a, could a chimp be a thick human at an intelligence test? Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. But it depends yeah. on what the problem with the with the human is, doesn't it? Right. First of all, mental illness has nothing to do with intelligence. Let's get that straight. That's one thing. Mental people aren't necessarily less or intelligent than people. Now, is that the clinical term? <laughs> well, exactly. A mentalist. A mentalist. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to start with where he's going wrong with the question <laughs> to answer it to try and find out what he really means. Because it's just that if that did happen, right? So what did what could happen? You want the Planet of the Apes, right. don't you? Here we go. Here we go. Go on. Right. I go to school. I go to a new school. Yeah. I go in the class. There's three bonobos sat on the back <laughs> row. Yeah. Right. I think it would make They're everybody. Bad kids, are they? Everybody would work harder because you go. Well, I don't want a monkey beating me. <laughs>
<laughs> Whereas when I so went to school- So you think they'd be an incentive? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I think, okay, they go in and go, oh, go on, what do you mean? No, I, w I, I would've loved it. Cause, I mean, one of the reasons I didn't like school is it's like, oh, I'm not bothered. You know, I'm not bothering going in today. I'd love it if, if I went in and someone said, right, you're gonna start coming again, why is that? Got three bonobos in your class. What if they didn't hang out together, like the two little um, kids with the webbed hands well, and the big heads? What, what if they, they started bullying you, <laughs> stealing your pocket money, well, maybe go in, I'd maybe copying you, make, maybe making you do their homework? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did find out. You to be honest, it'd <laughs> probably be the other way round, <laughs> and he'd score better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, have you been copying? <laughs> have you been copying the bonobos? Have again? you been copying Boo Boo again? <laughs> They're good though, aren't it? <laughs> it I, well, it'd be great. I love. I, I wish I could live in your mind for just a day. So it must be great when you walk around and see things. We were talking before, right, about, um, at school for some- I can't remember why it came up, the frog thing. <laughs> but they- they did a- oh, I'll tell you what it was, it's the march that's on today, right? And, um, I, I, you know, if people want to do that, that's fair enough, but I, 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 I don't like going out in big crowds and what have you. Sure. He uh, said, he said there's too many people to get anything done, right? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't do anything with more than five people. <laughs> do I you said, know what I mean, Steve, if you have a night out? If there's more than five of you, you can't talk to everyone. Uh, who's in charge of the night? <laughs> it makes it hard work if you want to nip into a restaurant because you've got to get, like, a table for six. Yeah. So if you're on that march today and you want a coffee- You've got to get a table for 20, seven, seven for one million <laughs> protesters! <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? If they're Trying to work out the, the bill afterwards. Yeah. 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 If they're Let's just split it a million ways. <laughs> yeah. Should we just split it a million uh, ways? Well, well, I didn't have a starter. Right. I need to pay with Switch. I didn't have a starter. Can I pay on Switch? Before you know, war breaks out. <laughs> so get it. They're fighting amongst themselves. Doves, there goes the fear. We got a crack on here. XFM 104.9. We've got to get in Rockbusters and a couple more tracks. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, go for it. This is Rockbusters, the last ever Rockbusters. Right, yeah, it's a uh, accents special one today. <laughs> um, I've done it before in the past using accents, so yeah. Uh, three cryptic clues, initials, email in. You can win. Uh, Do the email address stuff. now, so then take it down and start going. Right, Ricky dot Gervais. <laughs> xfm.co.uk, right? Yeah. Right, first one, uh, yeah. the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mam's daughter something. God. <laughs> oh, dearing me. The northern lad remembers he had to tell his mam's daughter something, that's O, the initial O there. Think of a band. Yeah, I've got it already, initial, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, okay, that's easy, go on, next. Um, second one, the person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. Right, the person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. The the initial there is T. You don't get A, B, or C with your degree. Well, that's just... and the final one, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. That's D H. The initials there, D H. So very quickly, the Northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. God, they're not going to get the second one. Oh, uh, second one. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. Initial T. And the last one, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. D H. Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and win some stuff. Is right. it important that they bear in mind the accents? Does the yeah, will yeah, the yeah, accent really help important. them? Of course it will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, of course it will. Not necessarily course. Yeah. So right, do that. Right, can, the uh, Valentine special, Letter to Hermione, one of the greatest love songs ever. And you've got a couple of minutes, please. Do you email know the funny in. thing is we haven't even done monkey news. Oh God. Right. There's nudists going about, playing bowls, <laughs> which we didn't get round to. Are there? Yeah. God. Um. Why are they doing that? They got fed up with volleyball. I don't know, it annoyed me when I read it. But Did we'll leave that, maybe we can come back to What that. are they up to? Um, some, some They nudists. gotta be careful when they're smoking a pipe and bowling if they're nude. Do you know how, like, nudists annoy me? I mm. saw it in the week that, um. Sorry, what was the what was the sorry, sorry what was the monkey news quickly? There no, 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 no. We got to save monkey news. We have to do that when we. Uh, when is we're it next quick? Call. Is it quick? Going into the record. Uh, what the monkey news? Is it quick? Yeah. I, I can tell it to you quick. Quick then. Right. Jingle. Oh, chimpanzee! That go. Shambles. Hurry up! There's a monkey in India, right, on a uh, railway station, waiting for the train. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't mess about because I've got to get through it quick. There's monkeys, monkeys sat there, and uh, this robber nicks somebody's handbag or something. <laughs> goes running off down the platform. The police are chasing them. Monkey steps in, trips the fella up, pins him down, 
police come and arrest the fella. He tripped over the monkey. Okay, play a record. He didn't. He tripped over he the didn't. monkey. The monkey was waiting for a train. He tripped over the monkey. The monkey was waiting for a train. He tripped over the monkey. Did you check okay. the timetable? Okay, leave it. He Letter to Hermione by David Bowie. Well, we're all getting stressed here. We're gonna run out of time again. We, we haven't had enough answers. We left it so late. We had so much rubbish to pack in. You did it on purpose. What? What do you mean? You did it on purpose. What left- I love Rockbusters. I think it's the highlight of the week. Mm. But- uh, I again. remember in the early days of Rockbusters, we used to get reams of emails. Do you know how many we've had today? Go on. Two. Yeah, because we've just done it in the last link, and people have to think about it and do research. They have that. to guess because it, uh, it, I, I, don't, I don't think f XFM Family Fortunes is going to be a success. Don't knock XFM Family Fortunes, Carl. <laughs> it ran on ITV for years. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well. <laughs> yeah, so has anyone got anything right, Carl? Well, we what we'll have to just do. Just as well, we haven't got any prizes to give away anyway, because no, we he gave them away our next month. Have, yeah, have we're we? coming through now, let's see, just hang on a minute. Well, this isn't radio. You can't just sit here looking at a computer screen going, hold on, hold on, that isn't radio. Right, well, it'll have to be the one who got the closest, right? Okay, what, uh, who got the closest? What are the answers? Give right. us some again. Right, oh. the, the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mates, his, his mum's daughter something. <laughs> I'm so glad this is the last one ever. This is the last, well, I promise, it's the last rockbuster ever. The northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. That was O. Yeah, I know that. What was it? Oasis. Oasis? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So that was a northern I like that one. one. That works. That works, though. Go on, what's the next one? This is what wor- this one worries me. Go on. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. No idea. That was T. Go on. Toto. Two, two. <laughs> <laughs> a C as well. Just made it up. A C. <laughs> two, two. I, I, I love it. I love it. Toto. Toto. Well, Toto. Well, Toto. Right, no, did anyone get Toto. that? Toto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so are I joking. I saw it on an email. Right, come on. Like that. right, what was the okay. last one? Uh, That's extraordinary. Last one. Uh, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything is going wrong. Going back in time a bit. The initials DH. Going back in time a bit? Yeah, that, for the for the song, it's not a sort of. Oh right, I, was, I remember. I, th- I started to hear that first time round. Uh, Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. The initials were DH. Yeah. That was Dan Hill. Dan Hill, <laughs> right? Dan Hill. Nobody got that one. That's that's a tricky one. But Steve, do you want to pick someone who got a couple? No. I mean, I imagine Dan Hill was on everyone's lips. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. People... I think I know about music, but I don't know who Dan Hill is. Sometimes when we touch. Yeah, the I, I, honestly it's too much. It's an awful ballad from about 1973. Yeah. Right, well, I, I, no one would get Dan Hill. Did anyone get Dan Hill? Well, I don't know, Steve. Do you are just. I'm not going to check. I can't be bothered. I just want to celebrate that it's over. I'm just pleased that we're finished with Rockbusters. Uh, what? Right. Did anyone get it? I don't know. I've got on, to put check. that one back. <laughs> I want to hear that answer again. <laughs> what? I, Carl, leave the mags alone and let me find that one. Right. That is someone's contempt for you. Yeah. They've put Oasis, fair enough. Second one, Travis, they've just gone. Third one, Oliver Hardy. <laughs> They don't care. <laughs> That's how much contempt people have for you. Who's the answer? Who's the answer? N-E-R-D? Yeah. Provider. Oh, I hope the ceremonies weren't listening to that. I'm not gonna come in for a couple of weeks. That's- <laughs> I'm not gonna be here next okay. week. Okay, no, let, 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 no, leave it a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right, just, I uh, think we should just take a break. Everyone should just take a break. Do, do a special or a best of, Carl, because this is- well, I've got to go away and rethink this whole thing, because I'm- I think it's actually probably damaging our reputation. Definitely. Definitely. What are you gonna do next week? Are you gonna come in? Can't. I'll have to be here to play it out, won't I? Fine. Yeah, right, because uh, we didn't- we didn't give the winners the competition, we've- I mean, it- uh, oh, see you later. Yeah, I'm not gonna be here. XFM. 104.9 XFM, Ricky yeah. Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl yeah. Pilkington's pressing the buttons. Yeah. <laughs> We're playing some, uh, some great moments from the last three weeks. And some great records, Steve, from the last two weeks. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. We're not actually here today. Um, uh, what are you up to today, Rick? Um, it's eight hours earlier, so, um, this is about two o'clock, probably. Mm-hmm. So, it's about six o'clock in the morning. I'm still in bed, mate. I'm asleep. <laughs> in okay. the, In me hotel room. Now, where are you? We're in L.A. Los Angeles. Yeah. City of Angels, Rick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. City of Angels. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what we're doing. We're doing stuff like that. That's why we're not here. We're not here next week, either. So, next week is the best of this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, isn't it's it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? <laughs> I just I imagine they're just there. I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, I just, can I just play along? <laughs>
<laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sign that is. I don't know. I, it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, sees someone <laughs> undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. <laughs> yeah, we need, I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. <laughs> well, what about this? <laughs> <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. When finally I think he said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig. I said, if they need a wig, what, dogs going <laughs> bald? And he went, like, this is fine to him. He went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke put in a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, but the and, the baby, and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child, didn't, you didn't like, did you? I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it is a bit daft, that. Are you sure he's not the, the ageing pop group? No. The but, animals. But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> Cos me mum, um, we had a cat- we used to get through loads of cats cos we lived in a- <laughs> Oh god, it's starting early today, isn't it? What do you mean you've got through a It's only ten past one. Cause, cause what we are you doing? No, Running we lived, a restaurant? We lived on- <laughs> Oh god, what do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. Right? So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. My dad it was kept their saying, risk. you know, stop wasting money, you know, it's, it's not Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats. Right, so, um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> It's just bag of noobs, probably. <laughs> yeah, Malingra. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrified. I'm going to witch house. Wrong. Oh, God, bloody hell. Wrong. <laughs> don't, so, don't let me go to the Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason it kept being sick all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that is news. Nice. That's definitely news. Nice. So my mum, so, I kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she yeah. shaved it. What? Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick, and it was a pain to wash, because it kept getting So, she up. wanted a dry wipe cat. So, <laughs> why didn't she just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, it's <laughs> weird, so, so, now, so now he's cold and sick. <laughs> No, but do you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that! Shave it, cos it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, that uh, is it's, it was yes. the weirdest looking thing, I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. But as soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Can't thing. touch it, and then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- I- Carl. It must have, I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got all right, that one. Or is that the, <laughs> yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Ah! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, but I, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God. Yeah, oh. Yeah. And were you upset each time, or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, innit, like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, f the, the, the first- Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look, and you don't- <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you... I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna, you have to play a record. No, but... Cause I just see Steve's face. No, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up. Well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here, no. as such, we're away again gallivanting <laughs> around, uh, yeah. um, we've got to do the special 
sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there? Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah, yeah. And we've done a few clips, just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off yeah. and Yeah, I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, should we play a classic link? Let's play, I'd love, what, from the last three weeks? After this, this is Feeder. <laughs> Well, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9, you've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais, show with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see. We're, this is pre-recorded. We recorded this last week, because we're away. And it's sort of like the best of, best of the last three weeks, since last time we were away, when we put out the best of. <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van, Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, <laughs> um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway, here's the first one. Oh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? I didn't story? know that. What's, yeah. what's happening? She went to see a medium, and, uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium, which was incredibly vague, but, um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not enough. <laughs> ah! Oh, but I'll tell you what, though, talking genius. about- talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play a record. No, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh, I don't yeah. even know if it's ghost, really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Right? Sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's- well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. She's, sure. She's walking down, like, a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, She's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About fifteen years later- Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She was riding her own bike. Okay. Riding her own bike cycling down the road- Oh, yeah. Looks at the kid, that's the s thing that happened, like, 15, 20 years ago. Right. It's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, not, not another child. No. Nope. So right. it's her, she's seen herself. Well, uh, what, Carl, <laughs> what, <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where's this information come from? But, I mean, what, why do you ever con- I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I- I don't- I- I- I'm honest- I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird though, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not true. It didn't happen. Nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? then she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, uh, on and as an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did, did she stop <laughs> and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <laughs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, if, and where is this information? Was it did it happen to someone you know? No. Nope. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the fourteen times. Ah, right. Well, uh, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Carl, let me ask you now, um, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according yeah. to the sun here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, man no, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. 
Mammoth, the big hairy cow from mammoth? the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then? <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth... A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we'd- if we'd have never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah. You know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we that's mean. how things start. This you is do, what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, is it- I- Is- Carl, Carl is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah, yeah. Do, should we well, speak slower? When we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do you think that's good to bring back, back mammoths? Prehistoric <laughs> These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be offended, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be offended. No, but, I'm sa but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, yeah. could it? Well, really? but, 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 but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it. But <laughs> with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna... Not a concern for you. Would you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I want to have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clones. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a what, second, what, what's as, the, as the words man, moth, came into your head. How excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? What did it look like? <laughs> just- he just was like a bit like- A bit, bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been- he'd been- he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth without yeah. his- his consent. And when he was asleep. Little yeah, he'd woken up. He just- he just went in for a rather goiter removed yeah. and they said, we've he replaced your goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that alright, Mr Jenkins? Mm, so sorry. he had the head of a, a little- was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you- Carl, if you- if you uh, went into hospital, and, and they'd done something. What, what's the worst thing they do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff? And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play Well, points. I suppose the lobster claws would also be quite handy, though. <laughs> Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful clip, and uh, yeah. a oh, great record that preceded or followed it, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, dear. Could, I, could I make some dedications? Yeah. Because I, uh, last week, uh, just before we had to come in to record this, I yeah. uh, popped out uh, trying to get onto the tube and I had a nightmare because there were loads, millions of protesters, so called yeah. protesters. Now, a lot of them obviously doing good work. There was one fella, I think you'd have appreciated it because I know you are very politically active. Oh. And I think this guy has really studied hard and he's realised the best way to make his voice heard on the international political stage mm. is to <laughs> ride around on a tricycle wearing a jester's hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He was really shaking up the bloody I government. wouldn't want to be George W. Bush about now. <laughs> Not indeed. Once he sees that. Once he sees that guy. And most of his aides rushing in and going, uh, uh, George W., um, Look at this guy. Where's that? That's in London, England. Okay, call off the forces. Is that a large tricycle? <laughs> yeah. Is he wearing a nappy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, get me Colin Powell. Why do you call him Colin and not Colin? It's the way he likes it. Don't <laughs> about. Just call off the troops. There's a <laughs> in the jester's hat. <laughs> call the troops off. Just bleep some of those bits. <laughs> XFM 104.9 of a Saturday. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. But we're not here. No, we're away. Um, so this is the best of, and I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we certainly are. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased yeah. to find out. Um, I d I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you'd like things to be quite, the, quite sa you know, samey. You'd like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. 
you know, because you've, I remember, what did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first day of XFM? I don't know why you're making a big deal do you because do you I'm just being honest, honest though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, well, he's a bit weird. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I know that's Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm you're, sure that wasn't what you said before. No, did he, he say before? I, yeah, he, well, well, he was I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look of his face. You know when uh, when you know your your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why is your kid?" Goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look on his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And, y and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might just get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that uh, for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there, then. But not just in the office. As you walk <laughs> through the building. <laughs> oh, it's, it's worse than you ever thought! Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought, because as you well know, Ricky DeVays, <laughs> yeah. uh, what did I do on, uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing, uh, for those, uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine, apparently it sells quite well, it's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of, uh, issues magazines, I think it's called Company Magazine, you know, it's like your sort of, I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year the 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the f in the 50? In the top 50 of the entire country? And then they vote, they vote and they put them in order and see who is the most eligible bachelor. But that's of, that's 50 people, right? Most, I mean the, I, it always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it, it, it kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. Yeah, it? No. Which always sort of unnerves and me And also they try and do a different 50 every year so they're but getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, you know, no, it's no, not no, really, no, no, Cause no, also no. a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are married so there's very little to- No, 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 on, no, 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 there's a huge, no, there's a huge, I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm sure. not sure actually, so sure. I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, sure. etc. So uh, Fred Durst. Yeah. That sort of person, you know. So anyway, l l this is what's exciting, right, although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year, all right, uh, they get- cause what happens is the all, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two-week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, I'm rather annoyed, because all I'm gonna win is a moped. That's whoa, the whoa, prize whoa, this year, whoa, that's whoa, the prize whoa, this year, whoa, a moped. Whoa, 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 backtrack. What? Sorry? Last year was a two-week trip to Bahamas, and this year Just what? a moped, I'm all, all I'm gonna get is all a moped. All you're gonna win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so- not, You've got no chance. You you've got enough. no chance. Who enough. else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of them of people you'd never heard of. There was, I know, Duncan from Blue. Ding. Isn't there? So, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're you're gonna come behind the other forty nine. No, 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 so, uh, no, 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 because you know, there'll be people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They see, was, my, they'll see my photo. And then they can vote for me. To, yeah, according to he, I was twenty second most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I would. ACDC. Brilliant. You shook me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Quick, um, query for you. This is from, uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think- Live the, your dreams? The arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Cos I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with. It's actually not your type. Right. right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right, so I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then, you know, don't go along with it, but if they're half bad, yeah. put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing- Brilliant. Right? <laughs> that's- that's solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. 
Um, <laughs> he's went along, I wanted to learn some moves. And How like, old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it. Um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you what, you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had <laughs> two fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl that's not an you yeah, Imagine if that was a film! <laughs> this is my, um, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would have won, <laughs> it, it won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, uh, brilliant. Footloose. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up. They banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, <laughs> do 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 do. do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Oh, uh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. You know, you'll find something else. I, I can't. I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go kart and kept myself busy with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's always, there's always just things. think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He so, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's uh, that. So that's solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice Side there step. is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not, if she's not ugly. minging, yeah. if she's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing. Get a go kart. Cheers. <laughs> Great. <laughs> XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get, do we need them out of the way? Get, do we need them out of the way? Yeah, just, uh, let's, again, uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, do we need them all? <laughs> It still amuses me. <laughs> so we found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus. Just yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's right. on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not. Right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Sea snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails. I don't know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Uh, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a, a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know, um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. The glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently a lot of, um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and right. eating stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones. Mm. But that, that's a problem they're causing. All oh, right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. Well, but you're glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not, but. I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They uh, um, graze on algae in there. But, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal. Why do they? Why do they exist? Would Would you be upset if you know someone said we're getting rid of them? Oh yeah, yeah. You would they're, be. They're an animal. You know, I wouldn't forget being like favoritism and all that. I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around. You can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job. Don't be worrying about that because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But. Do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to 
That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine. Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants were around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I don't know, I, don't, I don't think that sounds a bit... They only going to sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got to, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh, I'm proud of you. That he was, was getting really quite annoyed. I know. What did, he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You just well, don't tell the them. the thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be <laughs> safe because he could look after Jamie Fish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I'd... getting livid, you can oh, tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So oh. he's been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, 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 right. Last week when I did Do We Need Them, um, do you know when I called up, um, one of the museums in a science museum? Yeah, he talked to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wanted to tell you before when the song was on, but you're so busy listening to it. Yeah, oh, oh, to... oh, was I so busy listening to a song I was playing? Yeah, but we're doing a radio show, aren't All right, we? what's your point? Well, I just wanted to say, she emailed in to say I got her name wrong, so I'm just apologising for that. What did you just call her? I think I called her Jessica. What was her name? I don't know, I've got it on email somewhere. Well, this is not an apology! <laughs> no, no, I'm You've just got saying... it wrong again! You've not even said her real name! How is that an apology? Well, I remember, I read the email, so, uh, yeah, I-, I But I, who, who are you apologising to? Apologising to? I think her name's Jackie, I think. Oh, you've got it wrong again, haven't ya? you? Well, uh, well, anyway, and she just said if you, you know, if you want to see dinosaurs and that, go to the, uh, museum. You were complaining about that as well, weren't you? You went to a museum and there was too many dinosaurs. You just said, he said you just need four. <laughs> no, well, Steve, have you been to the one at, in, in Knightsbridge? I think this so. This one that I called up, right? It's nice. You go in, you get a good collection of stuff, you walk in, there's three or four dinosaurs, you've had enough, right? <laughs> go to- I went into New York, right, went to the museum there, hundreds of them. You can't move for dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they're responsible for them being extinct. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them. So all I'm saying is, if you want to see a dinosaur, um, go to the one near Knightsbridge. They've got a nice selection, some old vases and stuff. <laughs> it's worth going. So <laughs> that was great, Carl. Play a record. Well, well done, with, uh, bit of Amy Man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's it's brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show with, uh, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Yep. And, um, we're not here this week. We're off jetting around the world, so we've pre-recorded these links. Uh, the time is currently somewhere between one and three o'clock. So, uh, a time check there from Steve Merchant. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and, uh, oh, what, what about this weather? Um, isn't it warm, stroke, edit that, Carl, cold, okay, whichever one. Mm. Um. I'm pleased to see that the congestion charge has had some considerable effect. Had no effect. So just, yeah. Um, oh, wasn't that great on telly last night, the film? <laughs> yeah. I particularly enjoyed last night's EastEnders, Coronation Street, Brookside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Tell us about this monkey, Carl. You're gonna love this one, Steve, Go right? On. Uh, yeah, so last week we were talking about how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood, he got airy, right? Yes. No, no, leave it there, oh, Rick. we haven't got time to go into right, it. so... That's what happened. And that's what happened, he lived with the monkeys, he went airy. That's anyway, what happened. That's what happened. Looks into, uh, some other stuff about, like, airy kids and all that. Yeah. 
yeah. came across this story about a bloke, right, who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right? So, uh um, Trouble's brewing. L loving his job and that, but it's, qu it's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people, you're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, well. he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to, to a human. Well, that he pays. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. Is well, it dangerous? What do, you, what do you mean? What type was it? What, do you Just mean it let him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, a you chimp. don't even know. So it was a snake. chimp. It was okay. a chimp. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't so it? he it's gets pally with him, right? So he gets pally with well, him. Well, they gone all the way together. Well, no. I mean, it starts on off. The pool starts off just checking each other out and uh, you know probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, this goes on for a while. Is uh, you know they, they're getting on well on that, and then after a while, right, the monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh. God. Yeah, yeah. Right? So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. <laughs> anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks, he could he could live at home with me, this. Yeah. Because we're getting on the storm. Yeah. Right? So he takes him home and before you know Is this the it, beginning of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried, because he's already <laughs> imitating him and they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> <laughs> single white zookeeper. Oh, brilliant. Right, so Go anyway. On. So, it's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. It's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pinky tips. As a, <laughs> as a, uh, it finishes the day off with a, with a, oh dear. Finishes, <laughs> finishes the day off with what? With it a, it a doesn't have to move a piano at one point, <laughs> does it? He finishes the day off with a little brandy. Yeah. <laughs> what, he pours himself a <laughs> Is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl, you're, you're listen, a maniac. Listen, mate. no, this is, this is why it attracted me. It's amazing, right? <laughs> right. So, he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of, um, I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body is hairless. He's hairless. Right? Apart from his head. Right? So he's right. got a nice So it's the head. opposite of the kid. No. Yeah. This is what well, I'm that, that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if he's he shaved know. or if it's How did it say, uh, then the, the I'll hairless, what, what? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep so anyway, so, wow. um. So this is going on and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because he's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the this zoo. This is such <laughs> so, rubbish. So the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying, well, he's got his other Well, it gets to a point when he rained. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back so he said, you stay at home. So you are just, you're talking such Just let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me, oh, I'm fascinated. It's, it's, it's nearly over amazing. anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary, Carl. So, <laughs> it, he's walking up right, he's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy, um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Make him go away, Steve. How does he do that? <laughs> well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, what, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? He didn't say. He's built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he was well known. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. I don't understand how the I love that he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he, ah, oh, that what is- What was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know. I th maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing, <laughs> I Carl? I love the fact that- He's not gonna be talking with her. They're not gonna be playing, like, Trivia Pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. <laughs> I don't, I, it didn't go into that, it just said it, that's when the trouble started. Carl, play a record. Right. <laughs> Is that what Suzanne did when she brought you up? <laughs> Talking to the sun. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. Of a Saturday. Yes, thank you. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you should, we should, uh, do the competition. The, the, uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature, Do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's yeah, so good. It's we should, exactly. we should tease it out of well, them. Well, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've Sure. So I haven't really- Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson, 
and the documentary. Yeah. Now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. Amazing. And, uh, Amazing I asked Carl's piece opinion. Of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hand are. I'll tell you what, though. I did. What? You, how are you looking? The man's got, like, a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't even say that. It's libelous. Yeah, but, no, um, he, hasn't, he hasn't. He's got he's an a, old he's had two, he's had two face. jobs. Yeah. And you're looking I, at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like, is, is, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a, it is quite a, um, petite, sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourer's <laughs> hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? What, you can't accuse him of being a tranny? No, he's not. No, he's not. What a are you saying? No, no, he's, he's not. got enough issues, now you're accusing him of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really, I really felt sorry for him. Um, and, uh, no, I think it, he cleared up a few things, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work, but, um, uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just got going around, just taste. pointing. I know it's it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's uh, anything sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like Ming. But if it, yeah, I mean, and if it sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those. Uh, Porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of what do transvestites. You mean the hands were well, what? It's like you get what the, the, was it about his hands? I well, you know, you know hands. when you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he he decides to uh, turn transvestite at about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know right. what I mean, that way, he got a twin set of pearls and he goes, I've never felt so comfortable. But his hands are still big, he's got a little wig, and he's got the lipstick on, and he's with his teenage kids who are going, kill me. Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that why he was wearing that glove through most of the year? Exactly, because he's, yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hands. It would help him climb the trees. It is, it's right, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, it's, you know, it was alright. But, um, like, that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha program got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, was like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <coughs> and he goes, uh, he was well, watching Trisha. So at 10 o'clock. So think you you preparing you know, this show. Most people go to work about 8 or 9. Are you watching Trisha and that? I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um... Freaks? Was it, f um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had me dinner late, right, <laughs> mm. instead of having it at, like, one o'clock, like I normally do. Yeah. I had it at, like, 2.30. Yeah. Sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV2. Um, these Siamese twins... Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we, we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> I was waiting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the hairy kid. Right. And, uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was, it was weird that this programme was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I think you, you can't think? refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think, I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, right. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Right, right. But and, anyway. and, and that doesn't exist anymore. No, but it's so, conjoined, Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. <laughs> you think that's least Siamese twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Now, were you worries. stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Right. Because they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh. <sighs> sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. Well, I, uh, there was one set of Siamese twins, one, one had a job and the other one didn't. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Yeah. <laughs> the other one was unemployed, the other one had a job. She had to go to work, she had to get up at six o'clock on a day I'm off. supporting you, literally. <laughs> then they, yeah. Then they get done off the social for sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the other one was signing on. <laughs> I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There's a, there's a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? 
Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Um, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slight slight open. Slight dribble. <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know, I hate that. Like when a cat sees a bird land on the balcony. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> I can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? Um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. Like, ...what would happen? <laughs> How would handle that? It's, it's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what do they talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... Well, guess what I did today? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9, you've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais Shoe, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl. Is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see. We're, this is pre-recorded. We recorded this last week because we're away. And it's sort of like the best of. Best of the last three weeks since last time we were away when we put out the best of. Me and Carl went out, right? Um, and, uh, with, um, me and Jane, Carl and Johnny and Gigi, wasn't it? Gigi was uh, Is it important to went? No. Okay. But we're walking down the street. Carl was there, though, and he can back me up on this. Um, we had a curry. We were walking back. And, uh, this little funny homeless fella, didn't he? Mm. He, uh, oh, I got to tell it before, before I go, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he came up to me, right? And he recognised it. Um, and he came up to me and he went, he went, oh, he said, I've just nicked five of your DVDs from HMV. <laughs> and he shook my hand. He was so happy with it. And I went, right, excellent. He went, all I do is I just swing the bag over the top. Like that when, <laughs> when I'm going out, and he had a bag full of DVDs, didn't he? And what? he was, he was so pleased to tell me that he'd stolen. <laughs> That great. He said, that he said they're going like hotcakes. <laughs> he said they're going like, of course they are. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking them. Yeah. I know. We get paid yeah. for them, though, don't we? So he not the stolen ones, don't we? No. What do you mean? Did you sign them for him? <laughs> <laughs> I know you were, you idiot. <laughs> what? So um, he just nicked five. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you say he was homeless, was he? Well, I, I, he, don't know. Maybe. No. Surely, how would he have seen the show? He just walked past Curry's one, one, one morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Teddy. Seen a trainer for it. Thought, mm, interesting. I don't know if he was homeless. I didn't. I didn't go into his home sure. life. But, he shook his hand though, and but he's he, he made Carl look smart. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So, uh, yeah. how does he sell them? Where does he sell them? Does he go up to people and go, "Do you want an office DVD?" They're not nicked. <laughs> yeah, four quid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are they stolen? No. No, 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 no. They've still got the tags on them. Well, yeah. it's like those people who, um, you're, you're those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car. Yeah. And just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, the guy just pulled up, I said, uh, he said, I was in, like, uh, East London, I'll go back to, uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off. He went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no. I, th I thought you'd know the way. You're in a cabbie, aren't you? He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, don't. I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're going to go out just on the, you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't have yeah. either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, right, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. In fact, five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> I thought you knew the way to Camden. I don't really know the way. I thought I did. Oh. It was loot. I mean, Let I, me I, out. You know, Four yeah, quid. Exactly. And that's, I, I can't, I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands that they just think, it's three in the morning, I'm, I'm at a loose end, mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Wow. Well, yeah. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Couldn't stand it, but it's, it's good money. He was a prof- he wasn't like a chancer, though. Black what was, Black what was he, what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a, in a weedy bin? That was, uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do like a charity event once a year, and he did it one year, never asked him again. Tell the story again. I I no, I'd rather not because we, we got a few sort of uh, complaints about it. Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because it's because he put a kid in a bin and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> so, but we 
could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. My dad I, was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know how he was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that, and he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you True know what enough. I mean? So, <laughs> what are you meant to do? <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, but even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> so, it's, it's... That's genius! Give me an example of that, give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, give me an example of like, so, uh, it, you know... I can't, well, I can't because, again, that's what I'm saying, I can't tell you the story, because yeah. there might be someone out there who... This person might even be listening and think, I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'd, I'd prefer to leave it, but I think people know- Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing, though? You see, I can't explain- You can't! Don't be silly! I'd prefer to- to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying my dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burst. So we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here, no. as such. We're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around. Okay. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there. Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips. Just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off. Yeah. And I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last 30 years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of like- you know, <laughs> Life in the 50s. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Life, yeah, in the 40s, <laughs> it was brilliant, all sat around the old Joanna's, the bombs <laughs> yeah. fell, singing, they loved that. In the 50s, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years, it was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together, and then the 60s came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been, well, I don't know, 20 years ago? She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that, he said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's right, you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. <laughs> good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for He's my freezing. dad. Freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. How, he freezes out. How is he today? He's <laughs> fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is very, such a weird a mindset, though. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a big I potato to take well, to I, school. I, uh, and no, a poop I, and a stick as a Christmas The gift. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. There's a total dependence. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. Yeah. It, it just pine away. If he dies, she's got 30 years of pottering. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like, you know, uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. I know what you mean, yeah. it, it's sort of like that it's, it, it's, sad, it's sad, of course it's sad for them, but it's so not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I, I don't know, know why that is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for uh, I know, I've really time. brought it. You brought it down, you've brought it down, I've brought it down. This isn't a nice show at all, this is terrible. Well, We're gonna have really people just it's killing themselves. Uh, well. What? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, don't don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. <laughs> well, he did Christmas once. Didn't like it. No, he, my dad always. Said oh, right, steady on. That's a Christmas morning was for like you know for me. So he used to stay in bed. 
Mm. So he, know, he never. That's got brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't so, bother so me. I'm going to Honolulu for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that's great dad it's christmas do i have to do anything no so my mum used to get up because she used to like to see my face light up you know when, when i opened the presents and then uh <laughs> to give the fireworks and then uh <laughs> then i'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards because like my mum and dad were into having big christmas parties and i wasn't like old enough to go Right. So they say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> really? Yeah, I remember one year, right, I got got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. Uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is set. he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, me, let him be 18. Be about, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- Fourteen. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, gives a go. He turns the transformer up to, like, fourteen. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I ain't even got to Sounds Christmas like day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, that is. <laughs> Sat yeah, Rick, well. I just thought that then, sat satire. <laughs> It's if there's any satirical shows this in or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way because there's, there's, there's the analogy falls down no, apart from there being a train. Think it through though. British Rail was trains, <laughs> yeah, and the government broke the trains in many. Whether well, they didn't break them, like not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of. Yeah. It, yeah, it does work. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't. And, and no one's asked him to be on. Have I got this for you? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Because well, it, it is strange that <laughs> yeah. when you've got a satirical mind that, that <laughs> that's as quick as that. Yeah, All and right. it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? I just like watch telly and had some sausages. I bet you were happy with that, though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying, though, isn't it? When your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog nah, everywhere? Well, no, like but I mean, that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're a kid, you, you know, he had those fun, put them to bed, put them to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he you think so on Christmas Day? I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. And well, I don't have the party on Christmas Day. Well, that's point. that's that's another option. Yeah. yeah, your parents are weird. Aren't they a strange breed? Well, and I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, I used to get my dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So uh, got me mum. Uh, it was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> So I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So, I thought, right. <laughs> she must be pleased with you, then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it, is it like a brandy yeah, Do liqueur? you remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum, yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character, right? Okay, okay. So, uh, so I saw it, I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks, right? Aww. Got that sorted, went to Snips, bought the, uh, Victoria Plum. Next day I'm in, I'm in town with her, right? So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come, come in here a minute, right? Uh, so we go in and we're looking around and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there, that's all right, innit? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just, I, I, Oh God! So then Christmas Day comes. I said, oh. "Don't bother opening it." She said, "No, no, why?" Said, oh no! Why well, did you still give it to her? So well, it's too late. I'd already bought it. Oh cool. So she opened it, and I was like, <sighs> and she said, "Oh, that's nice." I said, "Why are you saying that?" I said, "The other day, I said it's bloody awful." She said, "Oh no, I thought you were pointing at something else." Oh no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> Play record. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. No. Don't put my foot in a pistol. XFM 104.9. We're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. 
Go on. Um, <laughs> the Shining. It's just more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, Is that on video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight because it's one of those films that, um. <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of them thick films. <laughs> so, so wait, you, know, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh, well, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family Fortune <laughs> before he gives it away? <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Jim Bowen has a go at those his nerd towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay. This is, uh, Carl, uh, in, in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay, then. <laughs> Still, uh... Still trying to write the, uh, the book then? No? Yes. Good. Funny, someone, uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write, is typewriter. I'll, I'll just show you, just... That's weird, isn't it? It's just, the typewriter being... You're not, you're not in the mood, are you? Just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again that you get into when you're writing. I'm not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. Yeah, it's just she's being a bit funny, a bit off hand in that. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up, you know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. Got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book, do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it, you know. But if you don't want to know, won't we'll have to. Don't bother doing it. But do you know what I mean? It's just airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it. But if you don't care, I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You won't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Oh, well, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. I'd do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much. Just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still Why don't you start right now and get out of here? Alright. I will. If you're gonna be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there. Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know if I was stranded in a desolate hotel removed from all human contact with Carl I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more chilling to me. Trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> Just for the hell of it, and he he, was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I think it'd be a great laugh, won't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film of you. it, like a little video diary. There's Carl there. He's just waking up. Well, just if I was stranded in that, that would be like being. I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> it, that's that's more scary. The thing the is, two of you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch, and he's taken a yard. Twelve thirty, you got in today. In the thirty minutes between twelve thirty and one, the old bin lid on the head. You wanted to do that again? Yep. Uh, squeezing my head, think he had a go at, and a karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in thirty minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can say that? Who else can say Yeah.
FM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show with uh, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Good. And um, we're not here this week. We're off jetting around the world, so we've pre-recorded these links. Uh, the time is currently somewhere between 1 and 3 o'clock. So uh, a time check there from Steve Merchant. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and, uh, oh, what what about this weather? Um, isn't it warm, stroke, edit that, Carl, cold, okay, whichever one. Mm. Um, I'm pleased to see that the congestion charge has had some considerable effect. Had no effect. So just, yeah. Um, oh, wasn't that great on telly last night, the film? <laughs> yeah. I particularly enjoyed last night's EastEnders, Coronation Street, Brookside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Child of mine. <laughs> On oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Jones, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a. Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always find mm. that thing that if you know you're used to living with someone, yeah, one of you will go, well, "Let's go to bed." Then you'll go, "All right." Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh. "You just forget to go to bed." You I just stay up. Okay, was... stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food. That's just the plate. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, I just I, I stayed up and watched. Um, it was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not not the fact that is the living dead and is. No. Nope. It drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in mirrors. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, he can't look in mirrors. Can he? Well, he can look in mirrors, but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, that still doesn't work. Go okay, on. go on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work at all. Go anyway. on. Well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> How neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre parting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. there was the real Dracula. Called... The real Dracula. Yeah, yeah the real yeah. Dracula. The true Dracula. film. It had blood on the floor or something. It's called. Yeah. It's rubbish. Yeah. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I we hate were, going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right? I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And, uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh any of you out there, um, know about this. Um, but there's the, an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scart lead that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut, like its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went instead of like thinking this is amazing experiment, he went, "Would it would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts?" <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining it. And I remember you mentioned because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me. You said, "Of course, one side of the brain deals with uh, symbolism." And as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed it took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said, it. I think I said chair at one point as well. Right, yeah. and I, I knew I was dicey with death there. Yeah, but yeah. um, I did, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah? spelling, the spelling of it's what? What is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't put, couldn't do it. Couldn't no, it's a point. Yeah. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Up. Um, so if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't know. But yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, what explain something. <laughs> I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told really? him about them. He was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us. Evolutionally speaking, they've got their social um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? Oh. So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? 
<laughs> Is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary the ladder? chimp, Carl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. That uh, was very, very funny. Indeed. What a wonderful clip that was. I enjoyed Do you remember it. that? I, yeah. yeah. Wow. It was in a, couple, a few weeks ago, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it, really? I mean, I think it was last week. We'd have to have very, very bad memories mm. not to remember that mm. hilarious clip. I'd like to hear that again maybe in a couple of weeks' time when I'm away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, it's just embarrassing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, but the, you know, the good thing is, uh, on telly, I feel a bit guilty about putting out shoddy rubbish because I'm getting paid an awful lot. <laughs> yes. But here, you know, I, I don't give a sh They can bleep that. They will do. They will do. <laughs> Peter David Bowie. When's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Did I tell you the time when, uh, the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die? All right, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about 15, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to, like, bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because you know, they'd, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Yeah. Scab yeah. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out- I mean it used to be a chocker. Yeah, uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> There's Master Crawford <laughs> fighting the kids off. Right, so I'd have like, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> uh, and if anyone can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once, yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. Yeah, a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the webbed hands and the big heads? So, and the horse in the set uh, yeah. But the day after one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Yeah. I was like, in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> could hardly stagger to the free cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk. She gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. It's, you know, the doctor said he ain't got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. So she said, yeah. I said, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> I um, like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she didn't yeah, go into detail. No, no, well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? Yeah, I had about six cream cones. All oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor <laughs> did. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, well, yeah. I'm not going to probe him. He's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in. 
Hi, honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. But anyway, that's why uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So right. we'll move on to this next one, right? Which is brilliant. Go Dead on, short story. So, right, uh, old woman, about seventy years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff. Nothing wrong with her. She's having a good life. And uh, one day she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out because she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says take your clothes off and that. So she does, and uh, checks her out. Says yeah, you're looking good. You're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh god. He says you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right. So she goes, oh. What, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could book you in for an operation. It's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation. Operation day comes. Strip her down and that. They're all stood round. The doctors start to operate. It only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I'm, you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, 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 serious. Right, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, You're talking. I, I, I've never had such. What do you mean? You couldn't believe it? No, when I read it, I said, I've got to tell Ricky this that. This woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. <laughs> That is a blinding record, and before that, Rick, what do you make of those adverts? They were great, weren't they? I like them, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna buy all them products on the way home. And that's endorsed by Ricky Gervais, he's won awards. Yeah. Rick, do you remember this? This was a hilarious No. Movie. No, you'll remember this. When you hear it, uh, it was when Carl said something that was basic- well, I think for a lot of people it sounded like a lot of old bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got now? Right, so we, we look into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoken to someone about jellyfish, and that. I'm uh, looking at cockroaches today. She is an expert, she's just not not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's a one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. And that's a history museum? Yeah. So, uh... He's <laughs> not <I'm> sure. He's <laughs> <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. Alright, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, that I found out is that, um, that they have 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia, that sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee, so with six legs you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double jointed? I, I think you're grasping at straws or something. Alright, well, uh, well we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so, um, no. If They're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got their mouth shut, they might... Be able to slide. Nothing to do with breathing. So Only just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and so got bored after forty <laughs> minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it that." Right. Kind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No. Pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleed to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of like, don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Why 
when it was invented as it got that facility. Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans and you know if you lose your head in some accident it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, to your family and maybe write them, write them a note, you won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying it was my own fault and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well that would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors, I mean they've been around for over 300 million years, they're one of the most primitive insects. Alright, well I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Rest? Yeah, they just, just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, maybe maybe the 25% uh, that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make up... they're probably searching out food and, uh, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge and they'll become very, very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we, you know? Well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with, with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yes. I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean, 18 knees, where did you get that from? It was, uh, it was on the internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? Well, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9. You've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais show with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see, we're, this is pre-recorded, we recorded this last week, because we're away, and it's sort of like the best of, best of the last three weeks, since last time we were away, when we put out the best of. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the next Educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right, I was looking on the web. But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know, Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh, oh. well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse a computer. Ah! <laughs> 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 Go! You are. No, I did, I did, yeah, I, no honestly. I, I did a search, put in Y, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight year old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, oh, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> mm. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> uh, what, you, but I put in why? Just, Just to confuse, confuse the, the computer. computer. <laughs> like, like, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone-in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool, yeah. right? And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing, because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do they, don't no, that's, that? no, 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 but it's rubbish, and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius, and 
Mm. You know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's- his mum's milk. What are you ta- what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just- A title <laughs> for the- the story- No, 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 it's what? just- it's just what would you do? Right? What do you I mean what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area. Right. What area? In in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But mm-hmm. listen, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet this yeah. eight-year-old lad. He likes his mum's milk. Yeah. And it's saying, is this right? Should it? No, be going it's not. On? But what? What? What, <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws, I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say, if you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> What, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and I'm, the public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish, and he goes, alright, son. She whops one out. <laughs> Um, and he starts having his- having his milk, right? <laughs> you live- you live next door, you're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it, because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you- why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought- I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius. So and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. nest, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. It's like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see. And you don't see. <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never. <laughs> oh! So what? Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you, know the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve? Is he's right. You don't see it. No, man I know Twix. that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right? They've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rollers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> so they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Look at him. You think he's it. giving a lecture Forget at Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, yet. go on. Sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure, when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. But now it doesn't look right. So he's. Having- <laughs> So, right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. s- old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so, think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, oh, it is a bit like being Dennis Norden, playing some great, uh, great moments from the show. I, I was just imagining Dennis Norden one day, sort of just like waking up out of his stupor, he's doing this, and he'd go into the producer and go, I've just seen a couple of my programmes. I just saw it'll be right on the night 18. It's sh**. It is why, terrible. Why didn't someone tell me? Well, we, th- we didn't want to upset you, because, uh, you know. But I've been doing it way too long. Well, you can just let me go on forever. Well, until you died, yeah. Well, why can't my son take over? Well, he's 80, Dennis. <laughs> and the jokes I'm doing, they're awful. They're just, why have I got that clipboard? I, I've written these jokes, they're not funny. There's an audience, they're laughing. What are they laughing They're not at? laughing, they're not, they're not laughing. That's kind of laughter. 
Who are those audience? Who who goes to an audience for it'll be right on the night? A lot of them are older than you. It can't be right. You know we have fifteen percent fatality in one of your audiences. <laughs> But I went I went home at Christmas, I watched one of the episodes, yeah. it was with my family and friends, I said, watch this, you'll love it. Stony face, no one laughed, they all thought it was shit. Well, it is shit. Well, why didn't you tell me earlier? We didn't want to hurt your feelings, you're an old man. You may be upward of 102. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Yeah. We're taking, uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big, kind of, philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be, uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into parked cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch him in the actual act of violence, which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Can't it's rather like it. when the, a little it's old a lady problem. went and got the A team, you know. It's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Do you sure. know what I mean? Like years ago, when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Stammers someone... were nicer as well, weren't they? <laughs> well, right. And Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tear away. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here. I mean, the but... thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed the floor, himself. Yeah. Just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is a fella he saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course you he, were. He Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. And, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love <laughs> to it. To see how far I could throw brilliant. it. Brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you about invent that, that game? Right, did so you anyway. get the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> yeah. no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle. And it, it, of course it did. It ate the back of this, uh, car and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it yes, in case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. <laughs> Genius. It's a brilliant sleep. plan. It's a brilliant went plan. I <laughs> couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh. the thing is our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family who, uh, <laughs> have saw you, me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door. And I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. And went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes. And, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see me dad. I went out. It was when he was working, sort of, evenings. So I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said. That's all he, he said. looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, now, the thing Carl, is, he, right. he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do. <laughs> so, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, a yeah. bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. <laughs> right, uh, okay, look, quick um, query for you, this is from uh, Jay, he's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do. So he's got the arranged marriage coming along and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because I think too many people go on looks, right? And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right? So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah, put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing, brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. 
I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. And How I, old were you? Uh, well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, All something right. like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it. Um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had <laughs> true fight in the boxing, you didn't even get in the That's not an- you yeah, Imagine if that was a film! This is not a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would have won, <laughs> would have won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Uh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's, always, there's always other things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yeah. Yeah. He so, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh. that. So that's that solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice Sorry there is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. She's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> This is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jamais with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Bilkington. You don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much. Not really. No. no, I mean you. You know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but now I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Is there I a lot know. of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Proved your point. So, so, so when um, we're away and we're like out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of like input and? I always, if I've ever, uh, if I've ever, I've got like a a question on anything, the internet's sat there and I can just go on online and find out. The what internet I is is good. It's brilliant, but it, it's not all verified. It's not all factually necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's that you know that's it's it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like. Here's, here's one that I read in the week. Right? Go on <laughs> about this woman. Yeah, uh, she was a bit of a punk, and. Um, to get her hair done like she wanted it. Super glue. Right, no. She mm. got lard, apparently it's a popular thing, you might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, apparently the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer. Right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave. Right? It doesn't, it's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch, so, so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is, is given his, his brain to charity or something? Some sort of, <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Vesta. Yeah. Oh, that's boiling the a skull. Yeah. That's, that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. No. Just urban myths. Someone made it up. <laughs> yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to- uh, you can tell an urban myth not to really go, cos it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and- and the, and the, when you say what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Well, it, 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 there's, there's, well, there's- Were there what, any dates, locations, have you, have times? I think it was in Belgium. 
There's that, there's that, there's that one. <laughs> there's that one that a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was, um, broke, destitute. So, uh, uh, uh dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who, who, who told that story? Who told that story? As he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour. He's the only person who could have known those, that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he he's wait, dead. as his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes, just in <laughs> just case. Just in case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this, time. and what sort of, what sort of bloke goes, uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business, well, call me anyway. No, no, if I don't call exactly four, then, uh, no, you yeah. could commit suicide. Commit suicide. <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four, uh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't he just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you how I do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if it's engaged? If you want to be engaged, <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it it didn't happen, Carl. Uh, the the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's, he's on a, uh, train station, and, uh, uh, I say how I heard it, um, uh, he's, uh, uh he's waiting for his, uh, a crew station, waiting for, and, um, he shits himself. Uh, as you do. <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need, so he runs across to Millet's and goes, quick, Levi's, 36, the bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the, the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. He's soiled. Yes. And pants. Throws them out of the window. I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off. Open the bags. It's a jacket. Oh. No, he didn't have the call. Didn't have call. At what point did he go into it? Go, go quick. Levi's thirty six. And the bloke went. Sorry, Levi's thirty six. What a pair. Oh, no, no, no. Shall I wrap them? Them? It. It. Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No. I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> uh, well, 36 white stories. Well, well not, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's. <laughs> and put it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I don't oh. want to discuss it further. Yeah. There was one, um... Here we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died. And she had him cremated. Yeah. And made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. And she said, I did that, so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. true stories, again. It was all No, not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. <laughs> Head story, true. Yeah. That's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens, called <coughs> Lily White. It's, it, it's lovely. A song for the lovers, room? Really? Yeah. The big sound. You too, to kick off the show, Steve. Absolutely. The Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Claire Sturgis. Oh, hello, boys. Carl's ill. Well, he's not here. I, I mean, I never believe people when they're ill. I think yeah. they're always malingering. I never t take any days off work. I just think you can drag yourself in unless it's unless it's life threatening well, or. To, to be fair, Rick, can I just stop you there? Um, it's yeah. not so much that you take days off as you'll just suddenly decide around lunchtime that you've overeaten and yeah. you need to go and lie down. But I'm my own with boss. With a cold compress. <laughs> yeah, and but a I'm Swedish my own. masseuse. <laughs> I'm my own boss. Yeah. So it's in not so much you take room. days off. It's not so much you take days off as you never actually do a full day's work. <laughs> yeah. You actually exactly. prevent that. I, nev well. I never take. Take that hour and a half off a day. <laughs> exactly. Um, XFM 104.9. So what's the story, Claire? Do you know anything about Carl? Do you know what his, his no, illness is? No, I, I think he's got this, uh, this sort of cold virus that's uh -huh. going around. He phoned me yesterday. He did sound poorly in mm. his defence. Poorly? A croaky. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. He I'm coughed not, a bit. I'm not being funny. He better be in hospital. To, to miss take, this show. To definitely. miss this show. Flagship show of the week on XFM. Do you know, you are right, because, uh, and you've been away, haven't you? You've know, been away two you. weeks. We had the best off yeah. again. But that's part of the best of. Yeah. That's part of the best of the last two weeks, yeah. shall we? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we're going to try and get him on the phone. We're going to phone him and, uh, and, and I want him to really explain himself because, you know, I think he's malingering, to be honest. 
Well, so. he phoned me in the week and he said, uh, Steve, don't forget, there's a documentary on on Friday night about Oliver the Humanzi, the yeah. human monkey. He yeah. said, he said to me, it's gonna be brilliant. And it wasn't. And it wasn't brilliant. It was- I've, I've especially stayed in and watched it. I, I taped it and watched it afterwards and I've never seen so much hype and desperation. They kept showing the same clip of this, definitely this chimpanzee yeah. that- that walked upright like a lot of chimps can. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, it uh, lost its hair, so it was half human because all humans are bald. Yeah. yeah. So that's the half human bit. It didn't have hair. I'm sorry, humans do have hair on their heads. Yes. The other thing was this this desperation to go. Could it be half chimp? No. It's a chimp that superficially looks less like a chimp than other chimps. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Lee Evans looks a bit like a chimp. Is he half chimp, half human? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's a human who looks a bit like a chimp. That's yeah. libelous. Yeah. That's a bit insulting, isn't it? Should we just play some music Yeah, now? I'm really okay. sorry about that. I'll oh. get back to you on that. Yes. Tick tock, that's Coldplay and Clocks <laughs> on XFM 104.9. Which Actually, is can, I tell you, can I tell you a Coldplay coming yeah. in a couple of weeks time to a co-host Zoe Ball show? Right, one, don't ever interrupt me. Two, Sorry. don't tell them about other people's shows. No. Okay, moving on, thank Please you. Please do not mention that there are any other television celebrities on yeah. this channel, on this yeah. station. Sorry. We don't want to convince people it's only Ricky. But the interruption was the main thing. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Well, we can't get older Carl, right? We looked, he's got his ho uh, old number out there. Uh, 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 what, his home number? Yeah, it's a hold on, alright. So, uh, we went to the new records. He hasn't even given him this, this new home number, so something's funny going on. He doesn't want to be contacted. He hasn't given me his home number. I've tracked down a friend who's looking it for us. That phone might ring any moment. I apologise for that. But why is Carl not available? It's interesting that neither you or I, and I like to think of ourselves as being fairly close friends of Carl. Yeah. We have made him the man he is today. We cannot yeah. get in touch with him. In, we the, same in the same way that that bloke bought Oliver. Sure. I think that Carl is now ours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, he, yeah, exactly. I think very much that's true, yeah. Yeah. Carl is very much like a if human we, Z. If we look, we're, we're, we're gonna lose contact with him and find him five years in a circus in Manchester. Yeah, exactly, they're doing experiments on him. Yeah, yeah. And they're going, we, we can't we, figure him out. Yeah. Well, he's, there's something wrong he with his He looks like a human, he but- he, d he acts like a- cause usually humans stand upright. Yeah. And Carl likes to walk on all fours whenever he can. Yeah. It's he's not interested in other human women, he's only interested in apes. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. <gasps> oh my god. And he's bald. He is yeah. bald. Oh look, this, there's as much evidence and for Carl being a human Z as Oliver. Yeah. I think there's more. I think there's more. And, oh. Well, Carl barely walks up, right? I know. Scared of fire. <laughs> yeah. I know. It, it's, it is interesting, isn't it? Oliver was built, wasn't he? Yeah. I, see, I, 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 I don't know. Was, yeah, Why were you looking, Rick? I'm interested to... I'm interested that you, you, I couldn't, what, what, your eyes were kind of uncontrollably uh, drawn Steve, towards his? there. No, no, I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at his face. No, I, uh, I oh. Sorry, Rick, but if there's no. something you want to <sighs> get off your chest. Yeah, and that's, that was the human part of it then, was it? Being built like that, because yeah. that's humans, but... Yeah. Although Carl's is very tiny and hidden behind. <laughs> and he's got, I've noticed something else as well. He's got a big red arse. That's true. Hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's all beginning to slot into place. That's- And I've seen him c climb up a, a cabinet and eat a banana as yeah. well. Just to- Yeah. Have a lunch And peel it with his toes. <laughs> It's all coming together. Yeah. Right, we're gonna <laughs> track him down, cos I, I, he's malingering, he's definitely malingering. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he's, he's at home now, in the garden, swinging on his tyre. <laughs> he's not ill. <laughs> <laughs> I think more truthfully, someone said to me, uh, that I said, uh, Carl might be ill, they said, right, are you not gonna do the radio show then? Well, that's what annoys me. I mean, that's the biggest but, problem, is that, yeah. let's be honest, we haven't got anything without All Carl. All we've got is the hook. People are staying listening, cos eventually they think we might get through to him at home, yeah. and there'd be fun on this show to be had. If we don't get in touch with Carl, I think we may as well just shoot off and leave Claire to do the show. I've got own. some great music. Is that not a- Well, it's, is a, that, it's a small, small You could leave uh, the music with me. I could just play it. There's not it. really reason to be here. Okay, well, play some great music yeah, now, play Steve. Play great tune. Okay, sure. wedding present, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I'll explain what it is after. Just play it. It's, okay. it's, it's a joy. There's a monkey, there's a monkey theme. There is a monkey There is a theme. monkey connection. <laughs> Call in if you know the answer. <laughs> Doing their cover version of Pleasant Valley Sunday. That's from sure. this new uh, compilation of those. Uh, remember, they brought out a load of seven inches. Of course, in I, do. Of course I do. Of course one I do. One, <laughs> one, one, one of my. It was my favourite day. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, uh, oh. and on the B, B do you remember on the B side of each one there was a cover of a different song? Steve, I even played the B side of each one <laughs> and listened to the song. <laughs> the <laughs> connection there that we're talking about was, of course, it was by the Monkeys. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. yeah. Brilliant. They, Brilliant. they turned up in yesterday's episode, didn't they? Oh. A, a lot of people, I'm sure, won't have seen this documentary. It was on Channel Five after all. Oh, so yeah. I always feel like we should uh, remind people that uh, what, what we're actually talking about. If we just happen to mention Oliver, a lot of people don't know what that means. Yeah. 
um, if we explain that it is the, uh, primate version of Carl. Yeah, that's exactly. That's a sort of shorthand, isn't it? Yeah, the half, yeah. Yeah. But it was, they were on a Jap- the, 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 the Human Z. The Human Z, he was on a, cha- a Japanese, uh, TV show with- uh, they were doing experiments on him to find out if he was half human, and the monkeys happened to be there. Yeah. Mickey Dolan saying, you know, I'm quite interested to find out because, you know, I'm a monkey. <laughs> one of the Brilliant. monkeys. Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow. absolutely bizarre. Of course, we, um, we've been off jetting around the world, Claire, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to boast, I'm sure you don't no, want to boast I, either. Carl but, told um, me you'd been off, you know, off to the States. Yeah, that was the reason we weren't here the last couple of weeks that we went to, uh, Los business Angeles. Business or pleasure? Yeah, it was a little bit of business, a little bit of pleasure, mm. you know, I like to combine the two. Um, <laughs> and, uh, nice. It was, uh, we were, um, uh, meeting, uh, a, a company about doing the office for America. Um, yeah. Actually redoing it. Yeah, yeah not, not, redoing not with it with... or any of the cast, but no. with American actors. American actors do it, yeah. But the so. thing was, they, they, they were flying us over, and it was like the whole business class trip, you know, spending a little bit of money, and, uh... Virgin I, upper class, actually. Virgin upper class. I'd excellent. like to nice. recommend excellent. it. Excellent. It's, excellent it's brilliant. Very good series. Definitely Easy. get free flights down. Easy. Yeah, definitely. Easy. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, Richard Branson, lovely bloke, and I love it's Tubular brilliant. Bells. I don't, so don't, well don't, I don't think he owns it anymore. Does he not? But he's still a lovely bloke. He's still a good What does he own? He must own some that we can get. Oh, does he involve with Virgin Records anymore? <sighs> Wouldn't have thought so. No, I don't know. no, V2. Well, what does he do? V2. And Virgin V. What's that? Right. Virgin V's some Is that phones? beauty products or Brilliant. something. Brilliant. What about what Virgin Underwear? Brilliant. Whatever. Yeah, yeah give, us whatever, that. give us some of that. Give us some of that, Give us some of that. But I was uh, going to New York before going on to Los Angeles, where all the meetings were just for a little, uh, just meet some friends over in New York. And, uh, it's amazing, because, uh, Virgin Business Class, they pick you up in a sort of chauffeur-driven car, they drive you down, there's no bo- you don't have to check in upper with class. all the wish- Upper class, upper class, it's like, for, yeah, yeah, first yeah, class, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you don't need to w- sort of queue up with the great unwashed, no. with screaming kids, with ordinary people. Yeah. You yeah, know, basically, yeah, you, yeah. you get, you, they just send your information ahead to the airport, and you just drive through, a kind of drive through McDonald's-style check-in, they take your bag, they check your passport, Sport, boom, they drop you at the executive lounge where there are, I swear to God, lovely free plums. I had two lovely juicy free plums in the executive lounge. I haven't eaten plums for years. If you get to the bloke's name, but they had, <laughs> he had lovely juicy Ding free dog. plums, all right? That, that's the sort that of- That is why- That's the sort of wit that I'm capable of. That I heard is the why word he is plum. flying first car <laughs> he to meant, America. He meant to suck them through. I changed it, I transposed the whole thing so suddenly he was sucking on a man's testicles who he'd never met before. Exactly. For money. Exactly. That's the sort of things I'm capable of. Which is of. only half true. <laughs> <laughs> so he's used his there comedy was mind. No money involved. Right. That is why he was being jetted off to America to yeah. talk comedy. That is the kind of quality. But it was get. it was great. It was a really lovely flight. It was a lovely car, luxury car, and the the flight. It was like the advert. I've th- got those beds that sort of just well, the, rec- yeah, the totally seats recline. Kind of recline, so it's almost and you, uh, you got anything you want as much. And I was sort of like I was falling asleep, and I sort of woke up, and uh, one of the heiresses was like covering me with a blanket. It was like the advert. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. just brilliant. All the lights came down. Oh, and comes around and says, "Do you want a massage during the flight?" You can have, a uh, you can have as much drinks, although you can't oh. drink. You have a drink and then you fall asleep because yeah. it's so comfortable and they take the lights. So anyway, anyway it's brilliant. I can't believe my luck. So I'm driving down. <laughs> I get to the airport in my chauffeur-driven car. Right, I'm sat there. I'm phoning people. My mum and dad. You never believe what I'm off to. Just I'm just in a car. Just chauffeur-driven car. And I get to the airport and I, they, you just hand your passport through the window of this car to this little woman who comes over. And I'm just there. I'm just sort of buzzing the window down, handing it to her, buzzing it back up. Like I don't want to talk. Check the passport. Take my luggage. I don't want to discuss things. You know who I am. And she hands the passport back through the window. She says, it's expired. <laughs> <laughs> I went, you are? What, what do you mean? She went, it's expired. I thought, it, I said, it's business class. What can you do? Can you do anything? And she went, no, you, we can send you to America, but eight hours later, you'll have to just turn around and come back. They won't let you through immigration. I was like, what can I do? I gotta go to Los Angeles and talk about, like, the office and that. And she said, uh, well, it's up to you. So, um, the chauffeur-driven car drove me straight to the passport office, down, uh, in sort of, uh, Victoria, which I have to you say- back into town? So I had to come back into town. I didn't get on a plane. I'm wearing my suit, because I thought I'd wear the suit so I look like a real player, so I'm wearing I my suit. I love the fact that you wore a suit. I wore a track suit, because yeah, I thought, well, I don't need to get upgraded. I'm first class. Exactly. I, could, I, I, I was- I wanted to go on in my pants and slippers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, with- fact, wasn't that why she covered you with a blanket? <laughs> 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 but, uh, so they take me back down to, uh, the passport. <laughs> I don't know if you've had to go down and get your passport changed, but it, they treat you like you are an illegal immigrant, yeah, sneaking into the country. Right, yeah. I'm wearing a suit, I've got luggage, you know, I've cl- I'm clearly a dignified kind of guy, that's obvious. I'm speaking with a certain eloquence, I've got certain powers. 
<laughs> I'd just been working on it in the car. Oh, right, okay. And, Go um, on. <laughs> and they just, and they said, you've got to come back that night. So I had to come back. I had to, I had to get my passport. It photos me. Done. I had to buy a sandwich. I had enough change for the machine because it was not, a, it was an absolute nightmare. I ended up, I spent, I began the day in a chauffeur driven car on my way to Los Angeles to discuss business with, uh, Universal Television Pictures, and I spent, I ended the day on the tube <laughs> in a suit with my luggage. Stood next to one of the posters advertising this radio show, <laughs> which was just embarrassing because people kept pointing and staring and laughing. He called me, called me, like they said, Rick. I've really much. I go, go on. He went, I, my passport was I went, oh, so what are you going to do? He went, uh, he went. He said, right, I quote. He went, I didn't know passports expired. Yeah. I went, what do you mean? I went. He went, well, your driving license doesn't. I went, what are you talking about? He said, how old do you have to be to know that? He said, <laughs> he said, when will I know all these things? Yeah. <laughs> that is. When will I know all Steve, these I things? I want to just come and hug you. But do you uh, know what I mean? Did you know oh, that? Did you genuinely know that your passport expired? I did, because um, my passport expired because she's alive. years ago. And because she's I alive in it. the world. There is so <laughs> much stuff that I don't know because I don't think I've reached a certain age yet. I remember you walking down the street once and you said there were some roadworks. And you said, oh, they're probably doing those roadworks because and it's the end of the it, financial yeah, year and they've got to spend their money. I thought, well, how do you know that information? <laughs> how do I just tell you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. I don't talk to cabs. <laughs> I mean, chauffeur-driven cars. I put the little window up so they don't talk to me. How old are you? Twenty-eight. Are you old? Are you old enough yet? To help a, a long distance lorry driver back into a car park? Definitely not. Are oh, you an idiot? Play a record. And I'm also, I've, I'm not old enough yet to be able to say, uh, uh, can I have a pint lorry, please, Chief? <laughs> in a pub. <laughs> I wonder when I get to that age. <laughs> no, you're a long way off. Yeah. Another classic there from Oasis, Supersonic on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis standing hello, in for, hello. for Carl. But where is Carl? Where is Carl? So we've, Failed to get in touch with him at home. Well, it, look, he doesn't do want to be listening? contacted. He's turned up every phone off. He hasn't given the XFM his new home phone number. He doesn't want to be contacted. I can't believe he's not listening. To be honest, so you think he's listening now? Yeah, he been? listened. He listened in Manchester. If he's not listening, he's out and about. Uh, I mean, has anyone spotted Carl? What's your message to him, Rick? If he's listening, uh, get, call up. Uh huh. Anything else? More sort of call um, up or you're fired. Okay. Any bad language you want to use? Obviously, you can't really. I can't really it. say it. What sort of words? I mean, the f word. Would you say? I'd say the f word. I'd call him a, um, a twat. Um, uh, would you use the p word? I'm thinking of prick. Prick. Yeah. Okay. Definitely use that. <laughs> not, not on not on air, but sure. I'd call him a stupid tits? little prick. Would you, would you just say your tits? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Little. All right. Little. You stupid little bag of tits. I'd yeah, say to yeah, him. Yeah, not, yeah. I mean, privately. What well, about the MF word? Because that's pretty intense. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that this is not appropriate now? <laughs> do you think he's? Do you think that would be too too extreme? I'm worried if I use that, and, no he was, and he was and he was genuinely ill, sure. I'd feel, feel a, bit of a, a bit of a, a, a c word. Uh, cop. Sure. Yeah. Oh, cop. Um, yeah. Because I wasn't thinking of that. C -word. I, I mean, a, um, I mean a male. Bird. Sure, because we've got in trouble with that before. Meaning penis, and we don't mean that. Yeah, we no. don't mean penis. Um, but if if you do, if anyone out there, well, sorry, sorry about that. Um, th th it was a discussion about bad language. We weren't actually using it. But if any of you out there do see the little twat, get him to call <laughs> XFM immediately. Yeah, and likewise, if you're listening, Carl, uh, you cheeky. MF. <laughs> um, uh, well, you sexy MF, as you, Prince once said. Yeah. Then give us a ring because we'd love to talk to you. We just want to find out. Just call in. We know you're listening. Little. <laughs> Shit. Amy Man, Red Vines. Brilliant. Lovely track. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis, in for Carl Pilkington, little. <laughs> he hasn't called. He may be Nothing. really ill. I'm feeling a bit I'd, Yeah. Mm. How ill is he, though? I mean, do you know what I mean? How ill have you got to be to not be able to make a phone call? Yeah. I find that so hard I to got believe. a sore bottom and I made it in. Keep so. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled a muscle in the bum. How? I don't know. And it really hurts. Have you tried to trace back through the week and figure out what yeah, made it? Yeah, I went to see the osteopath yesterday. Uh -huh. He put an elbow in it for half an hour. I cried. His own? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Oh, they got detachable elbows for that. Yeah. <laughs> Prosthetic <laughs> elbows. <laughs> elbows. Just hold this elbow in there for two hours and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can take I get that away? You can take that away. Though. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I won't be needing that elbow <laughs> for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> we had an email about uh, Oliver the uh, Humanzi. For those that didn't watch it, there was a documentary last night about a, a chimp that was supposedly a human or was half Carl's human or might seem program like... ever. Yeah. For a week, Carl has been saying it's going to be brilliant. Oh, yeah. I wish he was here. And to he's not here to discuss it, it sadly. Yeah. But um, 
Uh, Lee Cranston has, uh, has emailed in and, uh, says, uh, I thought the best part of the Oliver program was the guy Vincent Pace, the oh, camp yeah. fellow at the piano, telling how he first met Oliver. Quote, he grabbed his female owner, turned her around and bent her over and went to mount her. Mm. I made her an offer to buy him the next day. <laughs> Vincent was then shown in a very nostalgic mood playing melancholic music. He obviously wanted some monkey action. He really- that's- yeah, that's- I mean that, it is potentially that, liable. That's liable. Like, we, we don't- we- you know, we- you know, it's a joke there. But- We it, take- I don't take any responsibility for what Lee Cranston says, or indeed the fact that he quite- he puts at the end, did he want to turn Oliver into a gay pansy? <laughs> Question mark. That's Lee's <laughs> thoughts and opinions, they don't it necessarily reflect really those of XFM. He sees the- the- the chimp mount a human and go, I've got to have that yeah, chimp. I must have that chimp. I must have that chimp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Carl. Where that, is he? Call as him. you mentioned earlier, he was very well endowed, apparently. I didn't see it myself. It was a big, it was a, a big, big boy. chimp. Big sure. A big yeah. half boy. <laughs> yeah. A big half boy, half chimp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, Juan on yeah. XFM 104.9. Right, I just called Carl again. I've been calling him all the time, trying to get through to him, right? He's changed his message, so he is listening and I've got proof. So, can you just call the number, Claire? Yeah. Right? Right, call the number. Now listen to this. This is really annoying. <laughs> we should tell you now that this is not a, a, an amusing sketch or setup. No. What's happening there, Claire? Not quite happening for you? No, no, this is alright. We'll, we'll try, try that again. Try that again, Claire. Yeah. I'm livid now. I, 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 I'm genuinely annoyed because you'll see, when you hear the message you'll realise why. Right. I don't know who he thinks he is now. I, I, I'm beginning to wonder if, if his minor celebrity is going to his head. All this nice write-up in in Heat magazine. Yeah. He's changed him. Richard Anderson incidentally has emailed in. Go on, Dickers Anderson. It's not happening, is it? Though, not happening, is it? Why not? Because I'm a bit stupid. Why? Why can't? Cause why I can't, can't? I can't work it out. Can can't I? figure it out. How would you yeah. call someone normally? Well, normally I just pick up the phone and dial it. Sure. No, I and don't mean. Get, <laughs> no, <know>. I mean. <laughs> but it's like I have a problem getting it through the desk. I tell you what, can I play an ad break and practice? Oh, <laughs> and nice. Pretend this didn't happen, and then. Do you know, in a weird way, it's like, it's like having Carl. Here. It's like having Carl play the ads. I'll get back to you. <laughs> bit of Snoop, never. And when did when did a bit of Snoop ever hurt anyone, Steve? Absolutely, uh, never. Right. I don't think. Okay, Carl's away. He pulled the wool over Claire's eyes. There's a few people out there that believed he was ill. I knew he wasn't. In fact, at one point I thought, maybe he is ill. Um, his message on his answer machine has changed in the last five minutes and listen to it and this is evidence that he's not ill, right? Okay, right, go, okay. Then. Yeah. Uh, uh don't we don't? Yeah. Anderson, yeah. Richard Anderson I should just say, has, uh, yeah. has, uh, yeah. got in touch. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, Claire! No, no, I can do it. Just tell me. All right. Anderson. This is ludicrous. Yeah. So uh, obviously Richard Anderson. He's uh, he's emailed in his thoughts. Dicky Anders, <laughs> Anders, Dicky Anders, Randy you. Anders. Yeah. <laughs> Dickster, <laughs> Dick Meister Dick General. Dick General. And he says there's something making. Have we got it, Claire? There's something. He says there's something making strange yelping noises in the thicket at the end of my garden. <laughs> Shall I go and prod it to see if it's calm? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, sorry, I'm not in today, but not well on that. Um. No more rockbusters. I think that's what's affected me. It's got me down a bit. <laughs> so but, joking. Um, yeah. The doctor said I'll, I'll be uh, back, swinging on my tyre in no time. So. See you later. So he was listening. He's clearly listening. He so he has was record. listening because we said about swinging We'd on the tyre. message at any time. Right, Carl, call me. In fact, I'll tell you what, we play a little game. Carl would appreciate this. Call, call me, Carl, or I'm going to give out your number. What's the first five or six digits, Claire? Well, it's o oh, oh, seven nine six eight. Oh, seven nine six eight. Okay, phone now, Carl. Start calling now. Right, give the next number, Claire. Uh, it's it's. You said you said give the next number. One. Make one. note of this because okay. if you want to call, oh call seven nine yourself. six eight, and the first number to be given out is one. He's not ill. He's. How do you feel now, Claire? Because he's made a fool of you because well, no, you believed him. I mean, him. I actually he's made a monkey really out sorry of you. for him yeah. last night. Um. But now, past hour, I'm, I feel a little bit let down. Right, uh, uh, right, okay, so we give a number out every five minutes until Carl calls, because we know he's listening now, he's having, he's taking the piss, um, he's not ill obviously, you can hear that, he could, if, it, that was as long as a link, so he could have been here, um, he could e definitely call, 
Um, Are we leaving so, this mess? Is this a message we're still leaving yeah, on his phone? We're yeah. We're still leaving it. Good. Yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Why um, don't we leave the rest of the show on his phone? Yeah. As a yeah. message. Leave, leave it up. He's got yeah. to listen through it all so he can delete it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and, uh, the other thing, of course, is that he's not gonna get paid for this. No. So he, so he's thrown away 80 quid. <laughs> that's 80 right? pounds. Now, in Manchester, that's a week's wages. Easy. So he's obviously been spoiled. For, so for all his mank charm, he's down here, he's living the life of he riding. He thinks 80 quid's nothing. He, he thinks 80 quid's nothing. Already, you could be buying what you're, you could buying yourself a, your own horse. Yeah, you yeah. could probably get yourself a, a deposit on a flat. I just, I'd have thought so. Up I'd have thought so. Easily. Yeah, and so um, you know, on sun lamps because it's always dark. Yeah, he could he could he could go mental up there now. Dog so, piece of string. So what what so what's the first few digits we've given out? Oh seven nine six eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and the then code. And, and then one. one. Okay, we we'll give out we we'll give, give out um a Another number of Carl's phone number digits. Digits. So take that down because we love calling him. Um, should we have a little bit of feed or something? Let me just yeah. tell you what uh, what Dick has said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He said Richard Anderson. He also said, "P.S. The show's still rubbish without Carl." <laughs> <laughs> still rubbish. <laughs> still rubbish without Carl. Now is that a compliment? It's still rubbish without Carl, which suggests he thought it might be better with without Carl. No, I think he's, he means it's equally rubbish. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. Nothing Thanks. changes. Thanks, Dickers. Yeah, he's Beautiful. a Dick Meister. <laughs> That's Feeder, just the way I'm feeling, on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Well, he's okay. defying me. He's not calling in. We're gonna give out his number and he's not calling in. That's even more annoying. What- who do you think he is? I don't know who he thinks he is. I- I'll tell you what he- I'll tell you who he is. Yeah. <laughs> he is a little bold Mancunian. Let's never That's let him forget that. I don't know who he thinks he is, but there's the fact. I, just, Carl, call in, cos you're annoying me <laughs> and Steve. He's been slagging you off as well, Steve. Well, go on, what's In the week, saying? you know, he was slagging you off. I mean, in the week I was joining in and laughing along, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna- I'm gonna- No, but now I'm thinking that you're more on my side than he is. Thanks very much, Rick. I'm glad to see you've come round. <laughs> He said he was. Uh, I was in uh, in the in the uh, pub with him and um, uh, Johnny. All oh, right, so there's a little audience. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he went. Oh, he went. Have you seen Men in Black too? I went. No. He said. Have you, Johnny? He went. No. He went. Oh, there's there's a thing in it that looks just like Steve. Mm. And I went. What? He went. It's a thing. He's got really gangly arms and and uh, uh, bulbous eyes, and it just works really fast in the uh, aliens registration thing. And I went, oh, all right. I said, we'll bring that up Saturday. But since he's not here, you know, I th what do you think of that? Well, I, I, j I <laughs> the, the reason is that I think the problem I have with is this: that if if I was to say things like that about Carl, I'd destroy him. I, I, he'd be a broken <laughs> man after I'd finished with him. <laughs> Call in, Carl, or Steve's gonna say a few things about you. I'm gonna get a couple of home truths out there. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Yeah, we haven't- we, we were- uh, you know, at the time I was joining in, we were you know, slagging you off on other things as well. Sure, sure, But now sure. I'm thinking, maybe I, I- Maybe you were wrong. Maybe I was- yeah, maybe I was taking the mickey out of the wrong person behind their back. <laughs> because the night from Patti Smith, co-written of course with uh, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, it was a co-write, was yes, it? Yes, indeed. He wrote yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. there you go, learning something. Learning something yeah. on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. <laughs> no Carl. Well, Carl's annoyed me. Um, he's not playing. He's not ill. Another digit um, from the number? Uh, yeah, just do one more digit, Claire. Are you serious, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. Five. Good. five, so one five. Okay, great, we'll just we'll keep doing that. But I'll tell you what, the best revenge is living well. Indeed. Why don't we just do a brilliant the remaining 50 minutes of- of show. Okay. And show the people that we don't need Carl. High five. Let's do okay? it. Okay? You don't need Carl. Ooh, right, let's go. Starting now. Some now. brilliant- some brilliant stuff. Oh. <laughs> I just, You're gonna say something? Yeah. I <laughs> no, I, I remember when I was- I remember when I was growing up in Manchester. No, you can't. I- oh, 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 it's oh, it's funny to me. I tell you. X of, um, one, two point nine. I said, no. On, I saw it, I, a, a weird thing, I saw what was you know, um, we're in Leicester Square, I was coming through trying- I saw a hairy Chinese kid. Mm, no, I don't- that's it, it was that's weird, cos they're not usually hairy, are they? E, did I tell you about me auntie Flora? <laughs> Is that Steve? supposed to be Did I e buy ek as like? Did I tell thee about me auntie Flora, who shat herself for three hours once? Did I tell you? Oh, e, I don't. Uh, d oh, there was a woman born Carl, once. Carl, you have to phone us. We've Carl. got nothing. Oh, God, he's so annoying. Little twat. That's the uh, new one from Blur. Uh, out of time. Only three now. Probably had a sort of Carl equivalent 
who sort of thought, well, I can't, I can't be bothered. Graham Cox and yeah. they're probably at home <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> exactly. Playing guitar and they called him and said, well, you, you could play along. He went, no, I'm ill. Yeah. Oh, I'm ill. Come on, Graham, just, if, if you're <laughs> just playing, I, I can hear you playing guitar now. No. No, I'm ill. Yeah. Have they replaced Coxon? No. They haven't no. replaced him? No. Oh, right. Well, they probably will do when they go on tour, but I think they aren't yeah. interested. Well, I, I play guitar, I don't know. <laughs> That's true enough, you're <laughs> pretty hot so, on the, uh, if, uh, Diamond, you want someone to, uh, Oh, actually, Steve, in, in, in answer to your question, for the live dates, uh, it's one of the blokes from The Verve. Oh, ex Verve, remember? Did she interrupt me again? I Sorry, think so. Mate. I'm a fear in it. God, I can't I think I, I was talking. Yeah, I don't no. know if you were... Uh, you know, I'm, I might be mental, but I think I was talking. <laughs> Claire, wh when's your radio show on? <laughs> well, normally, when do you host a radio show? Am I allowed to plug it? Go on, yeah, go on. Tell us. Monday to Thursday, 9pm. Well, maybe, maybe we'll come along and start talking well, over I, you. No, I'm just wondering, Rick, I'm just wondering, who's listening at that time? My I mean, mom, what, we, we, we've got a listening. prime time which everyone is sat at home listening on a Saturday afternoon, Claire. Yeah. It's one of the best radio yeah, slots no in the business. no one's going to football matches or shopping or anything like that. No, 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 no. I want a piece of the action, I need it. Yes. I need well, it. Well, you've got it. And, they're, they're, um, they're playing a few, um, dates here and there, old oh, Blur, old oh, yeah. Blur. <laughs> Good. And that's off their new album, probably, with all the other songs and <laughs> yeah. that. Rick, I was watching TV last night, I just, sure. um, I think it might have been during the Monkey Show, actually, I'm not sure, but there was an advert, and it reminded me of a little crush that I just felt I should express, because I wonder if, you know, I've often used the platform in the past to just express my feelings for people. Yeah. And I've, I realised now, for many, many years, I've had a big crush on the Scottish Widow, from the Scottish Widow adverts. The she's, I, I just, I just want to say to her, you know, is it because she's sort of mysterious and hooded? Partly that, it's also because I know, I guarantee she's available. Because she's just lost she's her husband. A widow. Yeah. And I just think it's time to stop grieving. I think you've been grieving too long. I think, I want to say to her, you're a beautiful lady. That's and she's probably, she's and a she's probably got a big lump sum. I'm thinking she's probably got a sizable amount of cash. Yeah. She's obviously got a lot of spare time on her hands, not working or raising kids because she's wandering across the moorlands most yeah, of the time. Yeah, her kids are probably grown up. I'm thinking it's time or, to- Or, that, or they turn to crack or something. But I'm just saying this, I think it's just time to say, yes, he was a great man. He was a good man. He was a lovely guy. He worked but hard he's gone. Well. He's it's gone. time to move on. He wouldn't want to see you like this. No. Still grieving after 25 years. No, he'd want- he'd want to see her being humped by a big lanky thing with steamed up glasses, I reckon. I'll be honest with you, he hasn't got much say in the matter. He's dead. Well, alright, don't get nasty. And she's, frankly- She's still not she over- She is it. squandering that money. She could be out- she could be in Europe, she could be- be um, in Barbados or Hawaii, she could be spending that cash. She could get, she could lose the hooded short and maybe slip into a nice bikini. Do you know what? I think she's, she's wearing, kept herself in shape. I reckon she's wearing nothing under that. That's shroud. what I'm thinking. Dirty <laughs> slut. And I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming as she's Scottish, uh, that he she was a little bit thrifty. She couldn't wait for him to go. She couldn't wait for the poor bloke to go. He was obviously, I bet he was a little bit thrifty. He's probably got quite a lot stashed away that she's slowly working away through. Yeah. And I'm, oh, I want to find dong. out. I want to find out how he died. Yeah, I'm Cause intrigued. Because if, because if, if I find it's like, oh, it's, it, there, was a, there, there was a roller skate on the top of the stairs, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to reopen the investigation. If it was in any way suspicious. Yeah, yeah. Questions. So, your husband's be dead, and she went, oh no, where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> Steve <Absolutely>. Merchant's outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Built like a donkey. Yeah. He's built like a he's built like Oliver the chimpanzee. Yeah, and he wants to get at it. Yes, he's so bought his tandem. He's <laughs> yeah, hop on the back. We're going off to the moors. Yeah, he's tr he's going to fly executive class. <laughs> yeah, his passport is valid. <laughs> I know he that. Knows that much. He's got another ten years <laughs> on the passport. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what, the boys from Blur, they don't rock. Sure. Should we show them how to rock with a bit of bad company? It. It's a classic. Turn it up, Claire. Bad company. Can't get enough of your love. I'm in a rock mood because yeah, Carl's made my blood boil. Yeah. Really. I mm. might even play a song, you're probably too young, called, uh, Spirit of the Radio by Rush. It's sort of like, for rockers, I put it like that, it's like the ultimate sort of pomp, uh, rock, progressive pop song ever. Uh -huh, it's, it's, uh -huh. it's classic. Yeah, you, can, you can, you can, you you might hate it, or you'll love it, um, or you listen to it ironically. I love it. Well, you know, I, I just, I, I was listening to Led Zeppelin recently, I never really understood the rock phenomenon before, but I just understand it now, it just gets in your blood, it's yeah. extraordinary. Crank yeah. it up loud and it is just visceral and amazing and, uh, I wish I could play the guitar. Sure. Do you know what I feel like doing? What? Writing a little sort of hymn or a ballad. About to Carl? To Carl. Yeah. We've tried threatening him. That's not worked. Give out one more digit. <laughs> 
Uh, we got half hour to go. Well, because the three digits, so it's O, what is it? O? O7968. Yeah. One five. Next digit, please. Seven. Okay, one five right. seven. I Excellent. hope you're making a note of that. You'll be able to phone Carl, leave messages, tell him what you think of him. Uh, unless he phones. He can stop this at any time by just simply calling him. in the studio. He can just call and say, okay, don't- uh, uh, he can just call and say, please don't give my number out. And I go, as I always do when I'm winding him up and I'm slapping his head and I'm sort of like spitting on him and stuff, eventually he goes, shout, stop it, and I go, we well, only had to ask. Exactly. So if he calls, I go, you only had to ask. Yeah. Flaming Lips on uh, XFM 104.9. Well, we got through it without Carl. I think so, yeah, I've enjoyed myself. Didn't mention him much, did we? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think we think need so. him. I always quite enjoy it when he's absent, actually. I, I like know, because, Clary. yeah, because we can have a nice chat as opposed to yeah. him just going, e remember when I had Chinese air and they were old women yeah. eating her own legs? It's and just my dad a put Queensy. a forest gump in a wheelie bin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Claire pr brings a certain kind of level of class to it, dare I say that, you know? She, yeah. She's inept in her own way. In her own way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, know, there's no one- Oh, no, no, there's no, there's no one any good working no, out. I mean, no, 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 I don't no, want to no, give no, you no, that no, there's, no, there's no, like, proper- uh, I, 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 pr The only proper DJ is probably Camfield, yeah. I'd have thought, because he's been in- he's- he's- Nearly thirteen now, and he's been in the <laughs> yeah. he's been in the radio twelve and a half years. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, he took they, they tested him, and he's half human, half Vance. <laughs> yeah. Which is <laughs> which is quite yeah. He's got quite weird. a lot of. I think he's got the forty eight chromosomes. Yeah. That Tommy Vance has got. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, makes one Tommy Vance. Yeah, Tommy Vance, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a little bit extra. Yeah, well, because one of those chromosomes is pure Jack Daniels. Well, yeah, it's yeah. It's just Jack Daniels chromosome. It's, it's, it's well, corresponds yeah, yeah. exactly to a and Jack there's, Daniels. And there's some uh, Lemmy genes, <laughs> exactly. which I think you'll find. In there as well. In there. But, um, uh, although, I'll tell you what, I, I share with Camfield a, a, a couple of loves. Um, I, I agree that one of the greatest programmes of all time is Columbo. Columbo is brilliant. It is. Amazing, yeah. And uh, they're, they're showing them all. There's so many channels showing them now. I think Granada Plus show them. I think BBC show them. Yeah. I think I, uh, everyone's got a bit. I of think it. he's it's made um, eighteen thousand episodes. Are apparently. they still making them though? Uh, I think no, they keep I th they, up. no, they did in the nineties. They're they're not quite as good, but I think the original ones they're great. He's got this great character, and I share that with him. I, you know, I do like a bit of rock. I th should we play Rush? It's just oh, spirit of the radio. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we get we get canned by people who like new metal and Blur and that and, the, and those tr trendy bands, all that, the yeah. kids' bands and yeah, that. But you it? think this is pure? Yeah, I pure don't think rock. this would feature in X-ray magazine. We've got some great bands in them. They've got Kaloop, they've got <laughs> Demp, they've got Flap Nibble coming out with their new single. It's an EP yeah. and uh, Strep, the oh, early, excellent. not the not the latest Strep, no. the early Strep, the unrecorded years, which <laughs> is the only ones I like by Strep. And uh, <laughs> that guy in it, you know, the, the drummer Kibble, he's gone. He's got his own. It's going fringy. He, he's in for a chat uh, with Christian on the breakfast show, where you could win a trip to O'Neill's in Camden. <laughs> this is Rush. <laughs> Rush and Spirit of the Radio, <laughs> everything in that. <laughs> let's look quick. Let's put every type of music. Okay, go to reggae, into rock. Okay, look, opera, opera. <laughs> go, go mental now. Go mental on the drums. Double that. Double the foot. How many, how many bass drums have you got? Just to what? Go mental on it. Yeah, yeah. Right. It is obscene. That is everything in that, isn't it? <laughs> how long is it? Like four and a half minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. That's that's lovely. They should def people don't play music like that that's anymore. So, there's only three of them. I just think from, yeah, there's that, and just w one day in Canada, yeah. they just went, right, we might, we, let's make, we're only gonna make one single, yeah. so let's put every type of music <laughs> exactly, into that yeah. single. It's almost like a Stars on 45 yeah. version of music of yeah. all time. Of, 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 of every, of every music they've heard. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Good, are they still it? going? Do they still Catch play? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But that was for Camfield. There was Bad Company there and Rush for Camfield. Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Canfield as well. The A team. Do you remember once when we were talking about the A team and I was slagging it off on your show in the old XFM? Yeah, yeah. And I was going, I, I mean, the, the, I quite like the A team, but it is too, it's sometimes it's too far fetched to enjoy without it being ironic or it being for kids. And, um, I, I could hear fuming from outside. I could feel him <laughs> going, <laughs> 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 he didn't know who to call. He wanted to call Vance or someone or Lemmy. He didn't know, <laughs> right? And then I, I, I said, um, and uh, if you can't find the, 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 you know, find the A team, they out, they outwit the might of the FBI every single week. But an old woman who's having trouble with her landlord can find them. Yeah. And the 
jaw burst open <laughs> and Canfy went, that is because Hannibal sometimes disguises himself as an elderly Chinaman. <laughs> yeah. And that was his explanation for yeah. the whole series. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was for Camfield. Yeah, that's lovely. That's for his twelfth birthday, which is coming yeah, up very 13, soon. Oh, he's thirteen. 13 yeah, 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 yeah. Teenager. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna rock, Steve. Indeed. All oh, the phones going. Play that. Break a lance. Oh, phone. it might that's be Carl. Oh. Excellent. Wow, here's a bit of a turn up for the books. Carl Pilkington on the line. Right. Yeah, where you been? I'm, I'm off there, well, aren't I? Right. Okay, what's the matter with you? Just, um, just a bit bunged up and that, and got the shakes, got that sort of, that shaky thing to get. Yeah, that's because you didn't eat last time when Suzanne was at work. Yeah, well, I think that's what brought it on. Plus, she was away in the week and I put some wet <laughs> jeans on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think that's what's caused the problem. Well, when did you put them? On your head? No, they were just on the maiden and the, the legs felt dry but they Just on the what? On the what? Have you on got the maiden? maiden? What was she doing there? <laughs> what do you mean? On the maiden that you put clothes on. What? You your clothes, clothes horse? Maiden. Your clothes horse. Well, yeah. Right, okay, so you put wet jeans on, yeah? So, uh, that's why I'm ill on that. I'm right. not having a good time, I've been watching the football. So you're just sitting at home watching telly where you could have been sitting here? Well, I would have been better off there because I've got a chair there. I've got no chair at home at the moment because I sold it last week. <laughs> Why did you sell a chair? I what, you only had one chair? Telling you, what? Look, can't we just, um, I just was calling up to let you know I was alright and that. We're not interested in that, we want to know about the chair. <laughs> I sold it, I had a little two-seater and the, I sold it because I'm getting a new one but I've got to wait another month. So Don't you've got to that. sit on the floor for so a month. So you sold a chair before you had another one? Well, she might not have wanted to buy it in a, in a month or something. So I got rid of it whilst I could. She was alright, buddy. We'll talk about that next week. Oh, you're going to be in next week? Yeah. I look forward to that then. That's a dynamite piece of radio to tune in for. The yeah. day Carl sold a chair. Brilliant. Alright. Are you alright then? It's going alright? But why did you take this long to call? We asked you to call since the because very beginning. We've been that. phoning you. Why is your phone yeah, so strong? I heard the beginning. I, I heard the beginning of the show, I thought, yeah, it's going all right, the there and stuff. Turned it off. Um, you fact, turned I, it off! No, no, I put a tape in though, because even though I'm ill, I'm still showing an interest in it. Well, you're not, um, if you're watching football and shaking. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll listen back to it later, so I hope you haven't been dissing me. No. Right? Yeah. Definitely not. Don't so listen back to it, it's not worth it, but we haven't been dissing yeah. you, no. And uh, I've just been watching, uh, Football, Did you watch the monkey program last night? You told us to watch yeah. the monkey program. We all stayed and watched the monkey program. Alright, wasn't it? Was rubbish, wasn't it? Obviously, obviously not half chimp, half human. Well, I mean, they, they missed out a lot of the, the interesting bits. They didn't have any interesting bits. Those are the bits that you made up to make no, it more the interesting. Bit, the bits that I told you about about three months ago before they decided to make the program. Yeah. What were the bits that you came up with? Well, they, they missed out the bits about, uh, you know, the zookeeper. Right, there wasn't a zookeeper, yeah, go on. Well, there was, but they left that bit out. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> fine. Out, and they left and they, they left out the bit where it ran from there <laughs> in oh, 1975? Well, in terms of the, those that did research, they actually went and filmed it, you read it on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Chances are you're the one with the facts wrong. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, I think they also left out the bit when it jumped over three double-decker buses on a <laughs> yeah. motorbike. Yeah, on Evil Knievel's motorbike. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Not only do you not bother turning up, but you turn off the radio and start watching football. Oh, uh, yeah, I turned it off, but I've, I've recorded it. I'll listen back later and, and sort of Well, what you. good is that? Sort of, I, I like to keep, you know, keep it in shape and that. I'll have a word next week. All right. If you receive any phone calls from people you don't know, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Instantly, we don't know why. Why that is happening? Uh, that is just going to be a weird, spooky uh, thing. So and, and don't bother telling the story about um, Men in Black Two either, because I don't think people would be interested. Um, uh, actually, on the subject of Steve, Men in Black Two, <laughs> what? Have you seen that, Steve? No, I haven't. Carl, tell oh, me about I think it. You should see it. Go on. Why? Because there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing in it. <laughs> Go on. Uh, what a stupid, bold, Mancunian tosser. No, weirder than that. <laughs> There isn't anything weirder than that. <laughs> hey guys, it was gangly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> and, uh, you've got to see it because you wouldn't believe out the likeness and that you've got to see it tonight. Right. 
not as weird. It had a normal voice, right? <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you what, mate, it ain't worth coming in next week. <laughs> oh, oh, stay on the line, Carl. Play a record player. Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers. What do you think of that, Carl? Alright. <laughs> There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another I'd insightful what, remark. Steve is not a, a fan now. Not only does he know you've been slagging him off behind his back. No, I wasn't slagging Steve. If you get it out on DVD tonight, you'll know I'm not slagging you off. It could be your brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he, it makes it worse, but he's thinking, you're gonna go, oh, he wasn't slugging me off, it does look like me. I do think I'm an alien. I love the fact that you hope Steve will go, he's got a point. It's the, it's, no, it's a spitting image. Yeah. I am, seriously, Carl, I'm really angry. I'm so angry with you at the moment. You haven't seen it yet. No, I know, because I know what it's gonna be, and I'm just, I, why? I'm what's, fuming. What's, I'll tell you why I'm angry, because he doesn't do it in jest. No, but what do you think it's gonna look like? What do you think this thing's gonna look like? Gonna look ludicrous. It's not gonna look anything like me, but no, he's gonna it, like, no. pretend it does. No, Go on, what? Go on. No, it does look like you. Yeah, of course it does. And you looked like the, uh, human Z. <laughs> well... Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you did a bit, Carl. You walked like him, you bowled like him, you got a sort of gormless face like him. <laughs> Any more? I don't smoke. That does. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you, I'm not well on that. <laughs> oh, you're not well. What exactly is wrong with you? You whinger. Well, uh, it's just, do you know, like I, I always tell you about the, um, restless leg syndrome I've got. <laughs> it's like yeah. that, but all over. So you're <laughs> just shaking around the house? I'm just, yeah. What do you look like? Elvis? What are you doing you're shaking around the I'll house? I'll tell you, with your bald head, you're probably like an enormous vibrator. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> That's what you probably look like if you shoot <laughs> naked. Oh, you'll have a Scottish widow coming round. Oh, dear. That's, what's the name, by the way? I heard you talking about that. That's, um... Amanda Lamb. Amanda Lamb, who's in the Place in the Sun programme. Is she mm. actually a widow? <laughs> Is she a Scottish widow? Uh, no, just, just, uh... Hoots, man, my husband's <laughs> dead. Do you want any money and a bit of my clam? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right, that's the sort of uh, quality you've missed out on today. Well, anyway, you're going to be back next week. I we, we we need you back next week. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you know? Uh, also, how did you know you were going to be ill today? Because you phoned and arranged this yesterday. Convenient. And I yeah, spoke yeah, to you yesterday, yeah, and you didn't yeah, sound yeah, very I ill. I felt ropey yesterday. Afternoon. You've got a bit of a bunged up nose. Even now, yeah, I have a bit of a bunged Even up nose. Ill, I still sorted it out. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm a little bit sweaty. Paul, sorting out does not mean you phone up Sturgis and send her down. That's not sorting it out. That's making things worse. <laughs> Have you learnt nothing? Thanks, Claire. If you're not part of the solution, you're part All of the right, problem. Mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, my little, my legs a little bit achy. <laughs> oh, wearing wet jeans. Oh, I put wet jeans on again. I have oh, my, oh, my lasagna wasn't, it was frozen. Can you hear the venom and hatred in our, in our voices today? We genuinely are upset and angry with you. Yeah. Can't believe it. I cannot believe that you. I mean, oh. Right. Well, the thing is, the, it will be back to normal next week, right? We've got Billy Elliot doing the film next week. Right. Uh, any prizes? Got some good stuff. Have you got any films with Burt Reynolds in to give away on VHS? And well, uh, I'll see you then. Great. We're looking forward to it already. I'll see you later. See All you right. later. Hot, hot heat. Bandages, XFM, we're off, innit? That's it, it's all over. Yeah. Back next week. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Bye. Total yeah. respect. Yeah. yeah. Nice one. Keep yeah. it real. See ya. <laughs>